to the Arkansas team. On behalf of all of us at AT&T, I'd like to welcome you to the 76th Annual AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic. Tonight, we've got two of the nation's best teams competing, the Arkansas Razorbacks and the Kansas State Wildcats. I'd also like to wish each of you a wonderful 2012. Enjoy the game. Mark, thanks so much, and welcome back to the Build Ford Tough pregame on Fox. And right now on the field, the Arkansas Marching Band. They are known as the best in sight and sound, and they are here in Cowboy Stadium under the direction of Dr. Christopher Knight. things better in the college football world than the bands. By the way, how perfect is it that we're in Dallas with the Arkansas Razorbacks in the house built by an Arkansas alum? I'm Jerry Jones, owner, president, and general manager of the Dallas Cowboys. As a graduate of the University of Arkansas, I'm proud to welcome my alma mater to my home, Cowboy Stadium. During my time at Arkansas, I made lifelong friends like my old college roommate. That's right, folks. Before I coached the Cowboys to two Super Bowl victories, Jerry and I won the 1964 National Championship as Razorback teammates. Jimmy, we had a lot of fun in college, but remember, the University of Arkansas also builds great leaders. Our time at Arkansas made us the men we are today. We're proud to be amongst alumni that include governors, generals, senators, and even a Medal of Honor recipient. We hope everyone enjoys tonight's AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox right here from Cowboy Stadium. And one last thing. Woo! Hey! Sorry! Darrell, you've known Jerry for a long time. Have you ever seen him do that before? <laughs> never. never. And I thought he bled silver and blue, but it looks like he's still got a little bit of red in there. He does. And let's get back to the team in red. And look, everybody knows that Colin Klein is going to run the ball a lot tonight. Does that mean it's easier for Arkansas defensively? No, just because you know what's coming doesn't mean you're going to be able to stop it. I'm going to keep my eye on Jake Beckett tonight. They attack everything on the end of the line. He's going to have option, power game, counter, everything. And as Arkansas, it's all about the return game. And Joe Adams, the best in the country, three-part returns. He's outstanding. And you know what? If I was Kansas State, I would not kick the ball, guys. <laughs> Never. I wouldn't either. <laughs> all right. It's almost game time. Let's head down to the field. And PA announcer Jim Jennings for the introduction of our national anthem. Them. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, to honor America, we invite you to join in the singing of our national anthem, performed by Grammy-nominated and Country Music Association New Artist of the Year, Republic Nashville, platinum recording artist, The Band Perry. Oh, say can you So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streamed.
Great stuff from the band Perry. All right, guys, it is almost game time. Let's get down to business. And, Marcus, I'm going to start with you. Who wins this football game and why? I'm going with the underdog, Kansas State. I think they've been overlooked, underappreciated. Besides, I played in Kansas City, man. I you knew know, that's I what it was. I knew that's what it was. To be honest. <laughs> I became a big fan. Listen here, I just think they're a great team. I think he's done, Bill Snyder's done a great job of coaching his team. They're very well prepared. And I'm sure, Daryl, you feel the same way or are you going the other direction? <laughs> I, I'm going to jump on with you. I, I like the fundamentals. I like the confidence they're playing with right now. They've gotten better and better every week. Talk to Colin Klein. He said, if we looked at ourselves week one against Eastern Kentucky, we, we wouldn't even recognize ourselves. Uh, you know what? There's no way that Jerry knows that right now you just picked Kansas State in his house. If I'm not back for halftime, you know I've been kicked out. I can understand why. Let me tell you something. Cowboy Stadium is packed to the rafters. This house is rocking. It is plenty loud. It is time now to get it to the guys who are calling tonight's game. Gus Johnson and Charles Davis. Have a good one, guys. All right, Kevin. Thank you very much. CD, bold predictions by Marcus and Moose. <laughs> but you understand why. Nobody expected K-State to go this far this season. But because of Bill Snyder and the philosophy of toughness that he's established, this team can play with anybody. Toughness, which leads to power, especially on offense and how they run the football. You heard the guys talk about Colin Klein and what he would provide from the quarterback position in the run game. Well, the offensive line, a bunch of maulers, tough guys who will chop holes in the defense for him. Then you flip it over to the defensive side. They're proud of their defense, too. They display that same toughness, but they show a little speed, too, especially in the secondary. The cheetahs, they call the defensive backs, and they'll go get the football, especially Nigel Malone, their corner. Well, they're going to have an opportunity to go out after the football because when you look at this Arkansas team, they may be the fastest squad offensively in the nation. Relay team, anyone? Because that's what they have. When you think about you know, think about the wide receivers and what they do, but Tyler Wilson triggers it as the guys talked about in the pregame show. He'll throw to all those different people. But when you look at Arkansas, they also show that element of toughness too. Flip it over to defense, interior defense, and their secondary. Jermaine Thomas is a tough player back in the backfield. I can't wait. Let's go ahead and do this, Gus. No more talking about it. Let's go ahead and get to it. This stadium is electric. It's alive. These people are ready to go and see some football. Number six, Arkansas. Number eight, Kansas State. All right, Charles, you are 100% right. Electricity in the air. And let's join our coach on the sideline, our sideline analyst, Coach Tim Brewster. Thank you, Gus. As Charles just said, the atmosphere is absolutely electric here. Jerry Jones has built an amazing venue, but most importantly, these fans are here. They are ready to support their team. And guys, we've got two great football teams to play in this game. But I'm going to tell you guys, the hair on the back of my neck is standing up. It's electric down here. All right, thank you very much, Coach Brewster. The 76th. AT&T Cotton Bowl, 80,000 fans, a sellout crowd in attendance in the house that Jerry built as the Kansas State Wildcats prepare to come on to the field. And the Kansas State Wildcats epitomize the underdog. They fought for 12 weeks to get here. Tonight, they look to finish this season with not only a victory, but with the respect of college football nation. Not once this season did the Kansas State Wildcats let someone tell them they couldn't do something. When nobody believed in us. Nobody. 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 nobody believed in us. We believed. We believed. In our ability. In each other. In each other. These Wildcats are family. We, we, we are family. Family, family. Oh my goodness, what a play! The pitch here, they hear the touchdown, Colin Klein of the Wildcats! This season has become both a symbol of struggle and the reason for it. How much we're willing to fight to achieve what we want. We came here to play. Together, together. 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 We came here to sacrifice for each other. We came here to win. To win. To win. Wildcat touchdown! Tonight is the greatest night of their lives. Football games come and go, but a Cotton Bowl victory, that lasts forever. Who am I? I, 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 I'm the K-State Wildcats.
The Arkansas Razorbacks can be described in many ways. Tough, explosive, and fast are all well earned. Tonight, the Razorbacks look to show everyone they are an elite team and add to a long tradition of excellence. These Arkansas Razorbacks are no strangers to big games. Playing in the SEC, they know what it takes to succeed. Toughness. 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 And he is tattooed behind the line. Jerry Franklin. Speed. Speed. Here he goes. Adams down the sideline. Touchdown, Arkansas. The desire to compete. To compete. To compete. This is what defines us. An offense that is relentless. A defense that is stubborn. <laughs> A determined group of seniors that have one more game left in them. This is our time. Our time. Our time. Our time. We've come here to win. To win. To win. To represent our school. Our fans. Ourselves. 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 These are the Arkansas Razorbacks. I, I, I am an Arkansas Razorback. We, 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 we are the Arkansas, Arkansas Razorbacks. Razorback. The teams are ready as we get closer to kickoff here at Cowboys Stadium. When we get back from commercial, we'll have the coin toss and kick of the 76th AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by AT&T. Get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. And by the Ford F-150. Available with the efficiency and power of EcoBoost. And welcome back to Dallas. And this is the first Cotton Bowl matchup involving two top ten teams since 1994. Now let's take a look at tonight's Chase Freedom Cashback players to watch. And for Kansas State, their All-American all -American cornerback, Nigel Malone, is a terrific player, complete player. Can cover, can tackle, watch him on the blitz. And for Arkansas, their All-American punt returner and wide receiver is Joe the Jet Adams. He'll catch it, he'll run it from the tailback position, and on punt returns, three touchdowns on the year. Don't get shortchanged. Get your cash back with Chase Freedom. For more information, log on to Chase dot com slash freedom now we are getting closer to kickoff here in Dallas right now let's go down to the field where the vice chairman of the Fox Sports Media Group Ed Gorn is on hand to toss the ceremonial coin coin here's tonight's referee John O'Neill gentlemen on behalf of Mr. Mark Kiefer vice president of AT&T I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Ed Gorn vice chair of Fox Sports Mr. Gorn's going to flip the coin tonight this coin is unique in that it's got Kansas State logo on one side, the Arkansas logo on the other side. Whichever side appears face up after the toss, you've won the toss. Okay, Mr. Gorn? Kansas State, you've won the toss. Kansas State has won the toss. Defer their choice to the second half. Arkansas, you take the ball. Which way would you like to kick? Defend this goal, kick that way. Okay, turn your back that way, Kansas State. Arkansas, turn your back this way. Arkansas will receive to start the game. All right, the head coach of this Kansas State squad, 72 years old. Bill Snyder in his 20th season, he's been named the 2011 National Coach of the Year by four publications, named the AP Big 12 Coach of the Year as well. And on the other sideline, 50-year-old Bobby Petrino, what a year he's had. He's led this team to back-to-back 10-win -back seasons for just the third time in school history. His only losses of the season at Alabama and at LSU, the top two teams in the nation. 
The Razorbacks won the toss. They've elected to receive, and a very dangerous team when it comes to their special teams. Arkansas, they have five kick return touchdowns this season, three punts and two kickoffs, the most in college football. As you take a look at the series note between these two teams, it dates back to 1910. They haven't played in 44 years. K-State leading the series 3-1. to one. Their last meeting at 67. Arkansas winning 28-7. to seven. So Anthony Cantelli will send it away. And back deep, Dennis Johnson and Marquell Wade. K-State, Arkansas, and we're underway. Line drive kick fielded at the 25-yard line, and getting outside is Morgan Linton down the sideline, and Arkansas will start at the K-State 40. So let's take a look at the starting lineups for this Arkansas offense. Very dangerous, chock full of speed. And second team All-SEC performer Alvin Bailey helps anchor the offensive line. He's a terrific player, 25 starts in just two short seasons. And when they want to throw the ball, they have that track team. But keep an eye on their tight end, number 80, Chris Gregg, a former wide receiver. He's bulked up to play tight end. He'll be quite a threat this evening. Tyler Wilson, first team All-SEC, the first Arkansas quarterback to be named All-Conference since Quinn Grovey in 1988 when they were in the Southwest Conference. And on first down, incomplete. Ball intended for Joe Adams, defensively for K-State. Ray Kibble is their stout run defender on the interior. The defensive tackle had his best season as a Wildcat, rewarded first team All-Conference. And linebacker of the transfer from Miami, Arthur Brown, anchors things. He's also a first-team All-Big 12 performer. And back deep, David Garrett may be small, but he makes plenty of plays. Second down and 10 of the 42. Dennis Johnson, the lone setback for Tyler Wilson. This Arkansas offense averaging 446 yards per game. And they hand it. Johnson with the running room over the right side. And he'll get inside the 40-yard line, and it's a gain of about six. Raphael Guidry with the tackle, along with Ray Kibble. And it's the type of game that Arkansas needed on second and 10 to put them in this third, and what everyone likes to call manageable. Third or four or less is what offensive play callers are looking for. Third down and four. With time, all over the middle, knocked away, beautifully done, Ty Zimmerman. The sophomore from Junction City, Kansas, reaching around. Tyson Hartman in the secondary with Ty Zimmerman. They're two great secondary players. Zimmerman, number 12 on the coverage, comes up and goes over the top. Greg appeared to slip a little bit on his route, but a nice play by Zimmerman. Over the top, no pass interference. So look at this. They're going for it. Fourth down and four at the 36. Opening drive for the Razorbacks. And the player he trusts is Jarius Wright, number four. Third man in on the slot. Tyler Wilson in the shotgun. And he'll throw it again. Wilson with all day steps up in the pocket. Shovels it off to Dennis Johnson, but he won't get there, or will he? Let's see where they spot the football. Looks like they will be short. Arkansas going for it on fourth down. Coach Petrino not happy. Well, why, why did they have to, why did the play uh, become successful? Look at the coverage in the secondary. There's nowhere to go with the football. Everyone is swallowed up, and that allows Jordan Volker now to get into, get into the pass rush. There he is at the end. He shovels it off, but it's too late. Excellent job by the Kansas State secondary. So K-State takes over at their own 36. Colin Klein, one of the great rushing quarterbacks of this season, under center. John Huber, the deep man. Play action, Klein rolling, throws, sideline, and it's got man at midfield. 
That's Tremaine Thompson with the reception, and it's a gain of 13 yards. Let's take a look at the lineups for Kansas State. And they're anchored by a freshman, B.J. Finney. He's got some freshman All-American mention for his play this season. And then when they do want to throw the ball, their number one threat is Chris Harper, number three, a former quarterback turned wide receiver. He's really blossomed this season. So a surprise. K-State coming out, chucking it. All first down. Now at their own 49. Out of the eye. Delayed handoff. Hubert. And he's stacked up. Pile pushed forward. He'll gain a couple. To Narius Wright with the tackle. Defensively, let's take a look at Arkansas. Jake Beckett there, all, all SEC defensive end, anchors things, 21 and a half sacks in his career. In the middle, Jerry Franklin has led the Arkansas team in tackles for four straight seasons. And back deep, their leading tackle over the last four ball games has been Tremaine Thomas. He's been awfully active in the secondary, making plays on the football. Second down and seven at the 48-yard line. Klein in the shotgun, Arkansas showing blitz. Now Klein will change the play at the line of scrimmage. Klein to throw it, steps under the pocket, down the seam, and complete. He had a man, Tremaine Thompson was wide open. And when you get into bowl game situations, which you have to think about for both teams, is tendency breakers. And what we've seen already with Kansas State, coming out and throwing the football two out of the first three plays, that's a tendency breaker. So close to an explosive play early for Kansas State. Klein is thrown for over 1,700 yards this season, 12 touchdown passes, five interceptions, but his bread and butter is running the football. Third down and seven at the 48. Klein in the gun again. Up top, incomplete ball intended for Chris Harper, goes right through his hands. Two early drops for Kansas State, and that will force the Cats to punt it away. A little high with the last pass. Good coverage in the secondary by Greg Gatz in number 28. But when you play tendency breaking, and you have set it up, Gus, they like to run the football. You have to be accurate throwing it in order to gain the ground. Joe Adams, the most dangerous punt returner in college football, averaging 16 yards per punt return, three touchdowns, is back deep. At the 10-yard line, Ryan Doerr punting from the 40. And Doerr will send this one into the end zone. Arkansas will have it at their own 20-yard line. No score early. 76, AT&T Cotton Bowl. Back after this. Welcome back. Let's take a look at tonight's Nissan Keys to the game. For Kansas State, it's their run game that's led by their quarterback. Innovative in the way that they get things done with a power running game with a quarterback for Arkansas. It's their innovative pass game. It's option football, but it's down the field. The receivers break off of what the defenders do and go in the opposite direction. So Tyler Wilson, his best game of the year versus Texas A&M, played in this stadium. He went 30 of 51 for a school record 510 yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions. First down and 10 of the 20. Underneath, and it's caught. Joe Adams with the reception, his 50th catch of the year. When people talk about Tyler Wilson, one of the first things they talk about is his toughness in the pocket. He is willing to stand in and take a big hit to deliver a pass downfield. What's underappreciated is his mobility and his accuracy, not to mention his leadership. He grabbed this team in the offseason and made it his after the graduate, after Brian Mallett went to the pros. Mallett with the New England Patriots backing up Tom Brady, second and five at the 25. Five-yard penalty, still second down. So some early game jitters for both of these teams. A couple of drop passes for Kansas State. And now a false start penalty for Arkansas. So the layoff, uh, there must be a couple of bugs and cobwebs as they get going again. You can practice all you want. Game speed, the atmosphere, the emotion comes into play. You can't really replicate that in practice. Both of these teams off for over a month. Arkansas says they're off 42 days. Second down and 10 at the 20-yard line. Dennis Johnson in the backfield. 
Wilson to the far side, and it's caught once again as Rick Childs makes his 17th catch of the year. He'll gain six yards on the play. He's averaging on the season about 12 yards per reception. Coming back from the knee injury in the offseason. But one of the things I'm impressed with early in this game is watching Kansas State's coverage. They talk about the speed of Arkansas, but Kansas State's not really backing off. They're running with them, and when the ball is caught, they're right there to make the tackle. Arkansas averaging about 310 passing yards per game. That was first in the SEC. They were first in the SEC in total offense. Third down and four. Underneath. Beautiful throw. Flag on the play. Kobe Hamilton will get out of bounds, but let's see as Ty Zimmerman chases him out of bounds. And the flag back at the 29. It's one of those all-go routes and drag the receiver underneath short. And it was open in there. Let's see if maybe they might have picked someone off to create that extra space. Pass number three. Offense number three. 15 yards to the previous five. Repeat third down. That's Julian Horton, the sophomore from Norcross, Georgia. So right up here, that's Kobe Hamilton. He'll be the one who will drag across the middle of the field. But what he's doing is crisscrossing right there. And you see right there in that spot, that's where the penalty came in. Joe Adams, he's not able to just rub off of him and continue his route. He essentially blocked Arthur Brown. An illegal play. The officials caught it. Arkansas penalized. So that brings up third down and 17. From the Arkansas 13, they need to get to the 30-yard line for first down. Trips at the bottom of your screen. Johnson motions out of the backfield. Wilson over the middle, caught again, Childs. And he'll crawl forward to the 22, not enough. Arkansas forced to punt the ball for the first time as Jordan Volker comes up with the tackle. And Jordan Volker initially rushed the quarterback and then turned around and went downfield into the secondary to help make the tackle. Early in this game, Kansas State's keeping everything in front, rallying to the football, so even when the pass is complete, there's no yardage after the catch. The tackles are made on the spot. Dylan Breeding punting away for Arkansas inside the 10. Thompson back deep. And Thompson with the fair catch at the 32-yard line, a 45-yard punt. So coming up, one of the toughest young men in college football, Colin Clyde, and the Cats on offense after this. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by Nissan. Innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation for all. And the great views from just above the field come from our AT&T Aerial cam. Colin Klein and the Kansas State squad with the football at the 33 yard line. Klein did not run the ball on his first possession. He'll line up in the shotgun. Wilson and Hubert in the backfield. Now Klein gives it off. Wilson around the corner. Getting to the 40-yard line. And he gains five on the play. We talked about tendency breakers in the first series for Kansas State, where they threw the ball on first down. They threw it on their third play. And then you look at this one, and Braden Wilson carries the football to fullback. That's his fourth run of the year. They're breaking every key that Arkansas has been scouting for prior to this bowl game. Coach Snyder adding some wrinkles for this AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic, second and four. They hand it off to Hubert. And Hubert will get close to the first down. About three and a half. That'll bring up third down and short as Robert Thomas, the sophomore, comes up with the tackle for Arkansas. And as you noted, Colin Klein has yet to run the football on a called run. This is his territory. This is how he does it. Oftentimes, they come right up and sneak it with it. Here's a man that comes into this game with 293 carries for over 1,300 yards and 26 touchdowns as a quarterback. Third down and one at the 42. Arkansas compares him to Tim Tebow. Quarterback sneak. And I don't know. 
If he got it, it was the second and third effort because the legs never stopped churning for Colin Klein. Klein, six feet five, 226 pounds. Let's see the push they get up front. Arkansas meets them pretty well. And there was a chance in the backfield. Looked like number 43, Tenarius Wright, had a chance to go tackle the quarterback and bypassed him and missed him, but had a chance to kind of pull him back. He ends up taking out the fullback, and Klein pushes forward. Again, if he got it, it's because the legs never stopped moving. And he did. Second first down of the game, 8.04 to play in the first quarter for Kansas State. Klein bleeding already. <laughs> that didn't take long. He's like Rocky. You know, he has to go out there, get a little bit of that going. That'll get his juices going. You heard the reaction from the crowd. Many thought it was a bad spot. I thought it was right about accurate after the second and third effort for Colin Klein. First down and 10 at the 43. Hubert, the pistol back behind Klein. And Klein will run it with room on the edge, turns the corner down the sideline, and out of bounds, but a flag on the play on the far side at the 42. Eric Bennett chasing him out of bounds. And it would be a gain of 18 yards. Illegal shift, offense. Two players moving without being set. Five yards from the previous five. Still first down. And we talked about that time off for teams. It's not just the emotion. It's not just the speed of the game. It's the small things, right? The things you work on every day that sometimes slip up because you've been off for so long. Or as I should, or what I should say, not in game action. It's not the game speed. And Coach Brew preparing for a bowl game must be a, a very interesting task for a head coach. Gus, you've got to be very prudent in how you use your opportunities. You get 15 opportunities to practice, and you've got to utilize every one of them well over a month before a game. It's a tough situation to get a team sharp. First down and 15 at the 38. Klein, quarterback draw, held up in the backfield and goes down. Nicely done. D.D. Jones, first man to him. Tenarius Wright comes up and cleans it up. On the quarterback sneak, Tank Wright went by, went past Colin Klein. Not this time. Look at him working on Offner, number 75. And he continues upfield. And when Klein tries to flush up the middle, Tenarius Wright is there with some help from D.D. Jones. Second down and 18 at the 35. 6.43 to play. First half, 76 AT&T Cotton Bowl. From the house to Jerry Bilton. What a facility, folks. Cowboys Stadium, Klein looking, flag on the play, Klein elects to run and gets to the 40. But a flag in the backfield, Brian Jones makes the tackle, excuse me, Byron Jones. Look at the coverage downfield that Arkansas provides. Holding, offense to the 75, 10 yards from the previous spot, still second down. All receivers covered up. Look at this. Everyone, even when a receiver runs it past one guy, the other guy picks him up. So that led to this, the hold by Clyde Offner, number 75, on Tenarius Tank Wright. So far, two teams that look very well matched. Two teams that lost only two games the entire season. For Kansas State, it was Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. And for Arkansas, LSU, Alabama. Second down and 28 at the 25. Pretty good company there, partner. Outstanding company because you're only losing to the best in the country. That tells you you're pretty good yourself because you beat everyone else. Under six to go. No score. No score. 5.59 to play in the first quarter. Now here's tonight's State Farm get to a better state recap. Arkansas wide receiver Joe Adams is electrifying 60-yard punt return against Tennessee gave the Razorbacks an early lead for Kansas State. They want to keep this young man off the field. State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking get to a better state. Adams on the sideline. SEC special teams and all-purpose player of the year. 
Second down and 28. At the 25. number 70. Five yard penalty, still second down. So now we're getting to what coaches like Tim Brewster always call the self-inflicted self, self wounds. It's the SIWs, another penalty against Kansas State. What's happening to them now is Arkansas has gained the advantage for the chains. Look at this, second and forever, which means that it limits the strength of the Kansas State offense, which are Colin Klein's legs. So now let's see what Kansas State decides to do. They go conservative and try and run it here and then punt it away. Joe Adams certainly hopes so. He wants the opportunity to return one with good field position. Bobby Petrino telling us in our meeting with him yesterday that playing with the short field, very important for this team this evening. Second down and 33. Clyde sacked. He lost it. Arkansas may have the football, and they do. Jake Beckett with the sack, his ninth of the year. So take a look here. Jake Beckett out wide working against Zach Hansen, who was second team all Big 12. And he goes right by him and doesn't just sack him, but knocks the ball free, separates it. And Tenarius Tank Wright, his counterpart at the opposite defensive end, comes up with the football. Great field position for Arkansas now. The first big mistake of the game goes against the Kansas State Wildcats, and that's not normal for them. Look out for a big shot early here from Arkansas. Beckett, first team all SEC. Now Arkansas with the football at the 13. Johnson running it. And Johnson will get past the line of scrimmage. Possibly two yards on the play. Williams coming up with the tackle. Kansas State, they've turned the ball over, Charles, just 13 times in 12 games. Seventh best in college football. And they were plus 13 in turnover mark. And look at how Arkansas has jumped out tonight. They have nine straight games with a takeaway, trying to combat what Kansas State does so well. Second down and eight at the 11-yard line. Defense, a big story in this game thus far. Arkansas, the more explosive team, with their best field position of the night. Draw play, Johnson again, trying to jitterbug, and Johnson knocked backwards. Ball should be spotted around the 10-yard line, and the Razorbacks went second in the SEC and 26th in all of college football in red zone success, success scoring 87% of the time. And what they need here is touchdown. Because when you play Kansas State, if you let them hang around and only kick field goals, that plays into their type of game. You've got to set the pace against the Kansas State Wildcats. Otherwise, they chew up clock on you and keep the ball away from you. Third down and seven at the 10. Wilson with 10. Over the middle, knocked away. Ty Zimmerman. Beautiful job once again, and the Razorbacks will be forced to settle for a field goal. We talked about the toughness of this Kansas State team at the top, and it's exhibited in many ways. Watch Ty Zimmerman at safety, working against Chris Gregg. Sees the cut, breaks on the football, goes inside, and knocks it away. A second knockdown for Ty Zimmerman in this young ball game. So Zach Hawker. On the season, 18 of 24. His long 50. From 26 yards away, up and good. So the Razorbacks score first, three to nothing, 419 to play. A lot of hitting and tough defense going on here in the AT&T Cotton Bowl. Back after this. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic is sponsored by AT&T. Get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. By Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And by USAA. Proudly serving the financial needs of the military, veterans, and their families. And the great views from just above the field come from our AT&T aerial cam. Gus Johnson, Charles Davis, Tim Booster, Gerald Johnston. 
And the 76th AT&T Cotton Bowl, Arkansas scoring first to take a three to nothing lead. The Razorbacks are three, seven and one in the Cotton Bowl. Their last appearance in 2008, a 38-7 loss to Missouri. Jermaine Thompson, Chris Harper, ready to receive the football for K-State. And it's fielded at the five yard line by Thompson. And Thompson weaving his way, and he'll go down at the 30. That's a 25 yard return. Ross Rastner coming up with the tackle on special teams. Now, Sunday, our coverage of the NFL playoffs begins with the wild card round as Matt Ryan and the Falcons look for their first playoff win in seven years. Meanwhile, Eli Manning tries to lead the G-Men with their first postseason win since Super Bowl 42. Fox's coverage of the NFL postseason begins with the NFC wild card Sunday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. First down and 10 at the 30-yard line for Klein. A number of miscues for this Kansas State team, but they've shown an ability to rally late in games. Sometimes they can get off to slow starts. And they were aided by their defense. And what I mean by that is Arkansas had a golden opportunity. The sack by Beckett knocks the ball free. They recover it deep in Kansas State territory. But they only get three points out of it. The defense held them to a field goal. So the slow start by the offense Helped out by the defense, the game doesn't get away from them. Second down and six at the 34 after a four-yard gain by Klein. Angelo Peace, their number two running back, running the Wildcat. Klein at the bottom of your screen. And Peace looking for a crease. Breaks it back. Oh, helmet off. And tackles being made. What a job, D.D. Jones. Without his hat. Comes up and makes the stop and says, not in my area. Angelo Peace was a quarterback in junior college at Hudson Hutchinson Community College. He's trying to follow Braden Wilson into the hole. It was held up by the Arkansas defensive front. They formed what a lot of coaches call a picket fence. Nowhere to really go with the football. Nice tackle by D.D. Jones. Third down and four at the 36. Klein looking over to the sideline. And Klein in trouble. Tries to get outside. Lowered his shoulder, but couldn't get the first down. Terrific pursuit by this Arkansas squad as Jericho Nelson knocks him out of bounds and prohibits him from getting that first down. That's a big league tackle because Jericho Nelson's out here. He's got to make sure he doesn't move too far in the opposite direction. Stays at home. Has a chance now. Remember, that's a big, strong quarterback. Colin Klein, if he gets his shoulders square, he runs over people. Nelson takes him over the sideline, forces a punt. So Dorr will punt from the 24-yard line. His last punt, 48 yards. Wade and Adams back deep. Adams will give it a go. Adams trying to get outside and is wrestled down. At the 25-yard line, a 37-yard punt and a two-yard return. Excellent punt coverage by Kansas State with a brand new long snapper leading their way down the field, number 46 there. Dalton Converse just got the job because the previous long snapper didn't make it academically at the end of the semester. This is his first time snapping. First down and 10 at the 37 for Arkansas. Out of the offset eye, and they hand it off. Ronnie Wingo. And he'll pick up a few. Hartman with the tackle. And what a hard-hitting game so far. Very difficult to make yards against either front early. Arthur Brown forcing it first. Trey Walker with help from the interior. Kansas State gives up. 100 yards less per game rushing than they did last season. Arkansas has yet to pick up a first down. Wingo again, and he gets to the 35, and that's a six-yard game. So three and six brings up third down and short as Tyson Hartman is in on the tackle once again. 
as tight as things have been running the football early for Arkansas. That's as good. That's about as good a run as we've seen tonight. Not just in yardage, but in how it was blocked against the front of Kansas State. Arkansas on the season averaging 138 yards rushing per game, 79th in the nation. Third down and one of the 46. Out of the offset eye, Ronnie Wingo. Second man through and nothing. What a job. This time, Adam Davis shooting the gap and making the play. These defenses are all business, Charles Davis. Watch Adam Davis, the defensive end. The handoff plays off of the first block and is right there and doesn't give an inch to Ronnie Wingo. That's textbook right there. You can't ask for anything better than that. He holds him up, waits for the rest of the pursuit to get there, and flexes his muscles. Thompson back deep once again. High spiral in front, driving backwards. Thompson from his own one. Thompson, Collard stays on his feet. Flag on the play, and he'll get all the way up to the 10. What a beautiful, booming punt by Burita. But where is the field awareness of Tremaine Thompson fielding that punt inside of his five-yard line? That ball likely would have kicked into the end zone. But he may get bailed out because of the penalty. During the return, this is a block in the back, number eight return team. Half the distance for the spot of five. First down. No, he won't. <laughs> Actually, he got compounded. Mm -hmm. I think he just lost track of where he was on the field. Look, he's catching it around the two one yard line. And there's the block right there by Ty Zimmerman, the starting safety number 12. Nicely done on the pursuit. Markwell Wade, number one, getting downfield to force the first force to, to stop his feet. And then the pump pursuit gets there to put him down. But again, know where you are on the field as a punt returner and help your team out. So Kansas State will start inside their own five, but I like the energy of this game so far. Reminds you of that LSU Alabama game. Great defense, and that's what we're seeing right now. These two teams are really playing hard. And what you're looking for now is which team can get a couple of explosive plays and put them together to create yardage and open up some space against the defensive front. From the three, first down, Huber. And he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Isaac Madison, first man to him, another Arkansas helmet flying. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter with the score, the Razorbacks three, the Wildcats nothing. Second quarter coming up, Big D. back to the AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic as we start the second quarter. Gus Johnson, Charles Davis, Tim Brewster, and Daryl Johnston. And folks, we've got a good old-fashioned defensive ball game brewing for Kansas State. 13 plays, 24 yards for Arkansas. 13 plays, 37 yards. These teams average 800 yards between them. Klein in the gun. Klein going up the sideline. Incomplete. Chris Harper, the intended receiver. And that brings up third and long. I like what they did, though, because they run, they faked the bread and butter play, which is Colin Klein on a running play, run a little stop and go action. But Isaac Madison, number six, does a really nice job of not being fooled by Chris Harper slowing down and then accelerating. Stays right with him and is on the spot. Third down nine after four for Klein. In the shotgun out of his own end zone. Hubert right next to him. Klein flushed out. Throws on the run. Incomplete. Intended for Harper again. Looks like that may have gone through his hands. If so, his second drop of the game. Should have run the football. This is one time where Colin Klein was a little bit too unselfish. Watch as he flushes from the pocket, and then take a look. Look at this. That's usually his territory to run the football. 
I understand he had a guy down there, but that's a tougher throw. Let the big fella run it and try and pick it up. Door in the back of his own end zone, punting this football. And he gets it away. Wade and Adams back deep. Adams with it at the 45. Adams skipping. Adams gets outside. Watch out. Hits the sideline. The Jet. Touchdown, Arkansas. catches the football because they tell you as a punt returner you need to make the first man miss but it also helps when you get an initial block okay there's the first block now watch right there that allowed him to get to the sideline where the fence was formed and once he gets to the sideline it's over what an electric move by Joe Adams his best game of the year versus Missouri State he had two punt returns for touchdowns his fourth return for a touchdown of the season, and Arkansas takes a 10 to nothing lead. Back after this. 10 to nothing, Arkansas with the lead now. What a return by Joe Adams, and he got some help from his friends. Did he ever? Because he sets it up perfectly. But watch coming to the, right there. That's Ross Rasner, 35. Terrific block. He's a backup linebacker, but he gets some more help. Watch Jericho Nelson, 31, right there. A second block, another block here. And then once he gets to the corner, look out. That was Tevin Mitchell, number eight, with the other block. And that's when the jet propels. And this is where Arkansas wanted to be. Coach Petrino telling us they wanted to play from the front and make this Kansas State squad chase them. Thompson and Harper back deep. And K-State will take a knee. Well, it's been a long time, folks. Let's go back to 1961. The Arkansas Razorbacks' Lance Allworth returned a punt 49 yards against Duke in the 1961 Cotton Bowl. That was the last time a punt was returned for a touchdown in this classic game. Fitting that it was an Arkansas player, the man later known as Bambi, in the NFL, Lance Allworth. So we look at this, their eight special teams and defensive return touchdown this season for Arkansas. And that's the first one given up on special teams this year for Kansas State. And we just noted Lance Allworth there. But Arkansas, a proud tradition of excellent punt returners, including Ken Hatfield, their former head coach. First down and 10 of the 20-yard line. For Klein. And Klein elects to keep it, and he is dragged down. Terrific job by Zach Stadler as he read the play perfectly and dropped him for a loss. You know what they say about Zach Stadler? Not a great technique player, but somehow it turns out right for him. He's one of those guys that you don't worry about the technique, you don't worry about his hand placement, but somehow he finds his way to the football, having a fine season this year as a senior. Senior from North Little Rock. No gain on the play, second down and 10. Angelo Peace coming in for K-State. Sergeant's team timeout, Kansas State. And Kansas State calls timeout, 13.48 to play. Second quarter, 10 to nothing, Arkansas. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by AT&T. Get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. And welcome back. 10 to nothing. Arkansas with the lead. The 1942 Cotton Bowl Classic between Alabama and Texas A&M was played during World War II. At halftime, 31 men took the oath of enlistment in the Navy, including Texas A&M's great lineman, Martin Ruby. This flashback is brought to you by USAA, serving the financial needs of the military, veterans, and their families. Kansas State faced with a second down and 10. Their last four possessions, punt, fumble, punt, punt. Angelo Peace in the Wildcat. He looks to throw it. And Peace steps up and goes down. Great pursuit, Alonzo Highsmith. 
the junior from Missouri City, Texas, with the tackle. What, what I don't understand here is Kansas State taking the ball out of Colin Klein's hands and putting it in someone else's hands when they're down 10 to nothing. 10 to nothing is not insurmountable by any stretch, but I think they've got to get their quarterback going. And the run game is what's been their bread and butter all year long. Get to do, get back to doing what you do best, and let Colin Klein have his opportunities. Third down at 13 at the 17-yard line. Four receivers at the bottom of your screen. Klein over the middle and drop. Wow. Broderick Smith. And it's been that kind of first half for Kansas State. Drop passes, penalties, they've hurt themselves. Coming from the left side of your screen will be Broderick Smith crossing in the zone, and that's a nice throw by Colin Clyde. When your team's down 10 to zero, you've got to help out. Now, Broderick Smith missed a lot of this season. Bill Snyder didn't play him, never really announced why. His first game action from about mid-season was in their last game against Iowa State. Listed as a starter, but only has six catches for 60 yards on the whole season. And Doerr sends it away. Adams with the fair catch at the 46 and 37 yard line. The Razorbacks with excellent field position. Coming up, we'll see if they can move it against the Cats. And welcome back, where the Buick Human Highlight Reel celebrates former NCAA athletes who are achieving even greater things after their playing days are over. See the stories unfold at NCAA.com slash Buick. Excellent field position for Arkansas as we start here. The pressure shifts to Kansas State's defense right now. The offense is struggling. Bobby Petrino as a play caller is cold-blooded. He's looking for some of those explosive plays, the 25-yard passes, the 15-yard runs with this series. First down at their own 46 for Tyler Wilson and the Arkansas offense, Dennis Johnson with a huge hole, still on his feet at the 30 and down. At the Kansas State 25, Nigel Malone making the tackle, but it's a gain of 28. One of the explosives we talked about. Look at the left side of the line and watch how well blocked this play is. Look at the hole. He's to the third level, to the secondary before you can blink. Runs through a tackle by Ty Zimmerman, number 12. Tyson Hartman can't bring him down. And he's off to a big, big play. Now Wilson sprinting out of the pocket, throws back side. And knocked down at the last moment. Malone again. Great recovery in the air, and he wanted to pick that one off. He has seven interceptions on the season. Really well played by Nigel Malone because he did not move on the rollout by Tyler Wilson. He tried to roll right and throw back left, hoping to draw the defense over. But Nigel Malone stayed at home and made a nice play on the football to knock it away from Dennis Johnson. Second down, 10. Near side, and a strike thrown to Kobe Hamilton. Hamilton gains eight on the play as David Garrett comes up and stops him. But Arkansas receivers, Kobe Hamilton and Greg Childs, along with Jarius Wright, have three of the top seven average per catch numbers in the nation. Hamilton is third at 18, Childs sixth at 17, and Wright seventh at 17.2. And we have not called Jarius Wright's name tonight. Third down and one. Wingo outside. And Wingo gets inside the 10 as Ty Zimmerman makes the tackle. Do you get the sense that Bobby Petrino told his offense that this drive is our biggest drive of the game thus far because up 10, playing from the front as we want, they've got to put it to him as best they can because you don't want to leave air for Kansas State. They've been in this spot many times. He wants as big a lead as he can get. First down and goal of the eight-yard line. A gain of eight and gain of nine on the last two plays. Wingo in the backfield with Tyler Wilson. Here's Wingo. Low to the ground, and he goes forward, but Vi Latui is there for the tackle. I'll be surprised if they throw the excuse me, if they run the football anymore on this series. Second and goal. 
Hard to run it against them, even though they got the explosive run. I think they're going to put it in Tyler Wilson's hands. Jarius Wright, you just mentioned it. We haven't called his name yet. Third from the top, inside. Second down, a goal of the seven. And Wilson wants to run it. And he gets down to the two-yard line. I don't Lemur, the outside linebacker, makes the saving tackle. And I don't think that was a called quarterback draw. I think he just saw the gap and flushed and went to it. Remember in our meetings with him, he said one of the things he thought he could improve on was actually using that mobility and running the ball more when he felt pressure in his face. Third down and goal of the two. Arkansas, one of five on third down conversions. Wingo, the single setback. Wingo running right, and oh, and he stopped. What a job by that Kansas State defense safety, Tyson Hartman making the play and it's a loss of three one of the top student athletes in the nation is number two tyson hartman look how he stays stout stays square to the line and slips the block of jarius wright the national football foundation gave him an eighteen thousand dollar postgraduate scholarship but he's not done playing football and smacking people just yet so hawker comes in to attempt a 22-yard field goal And good. 9.20 to go. Second quarter. As Arkansas takes a 13 to nothing lead. Let's get a feel for this game from our men on the sideline. Coach Brewster and Daryl Johnson. Coach Brew. Gus, you really feel like Arkansas has settled into a really nice rhythm. They're a precision-based offense. It's taken them a little while to, to, to make the, you know, get in the rhythm of the game. I'll tell you what, the real catalyst was the punt return by Joe Adams. You can see tremendous life on the boundary. Gives them great excitement. And I'll tell you what, Paul Haynes is, and the defense is doing a great job on first down. That's the whole key. Moose. You know, Tim, I was at practice on Tuesday, and I was so impressed how Bill Snyder and his staff preached fundamentals. I'm not seeing that transferring to the game tonight. Offensively, pre-snap penalties, bad technique that leads to more penalties, a turnover deep in your end, in the special teams, a feeling a punt on a one-yard line, and then allowing the nation's leading punt returner to get the edge. Just mistakes you would not expect to see from a Bill Snyder coach team. Love the observations, guys. What I was surprised about was them not throwing the football more down there on that drive. I thought they were going for the jugular to try and stick it in the end zone. So Jermaine Thompson will let it go out of the end zone. K-State will have it at the 20 and for Colin Klein. There have been some miscues. Nicely thrown ball early in the game. Tremaine Thompson on the first series. That one's a little bit high. Chris Harper can't come down with it. And Broderick Smith on the last series. Line one for six, 13 yards. Kansas State has 22 yards of offense, 23 yards in penalties. And look at what they've done for, based on their season so far. Time of possession way down from what they normally do. Minus one after being plus 13 in turnover margin. But credit their defense. They've held them to two field goals and scoring opportunities and have kept them in the game. First down at the 20-yard line. And the Wildcats will run it as Wilson, the fullback, carrying for the second time, stopped by Robert Thomas. And they also had Colton Miles Nash, number 90. Bottom of your screen at defensive end. He's been a tight end for most of the year. They flipped him over to defense end. Watch him also stay home. Initial contact. Well played. Second down eight at the 22. Runs a football and is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage as Ross Rasner, we've been mentioning his name quite a bit tonight, comes up with the tackle. Coach Brewster did a nice job talking about Arkansas winning on first down on defense where they're setting up second and long and then just turning into second from second, from second from second long to third and long. The new defensive coordinator, Paul Haynes, has a new spirit on this team. They felt this rushing team to 11 yards tonight. They average close to 200 per game. 
Third down, eight at the 22. They need to go to the 30. Four first down. Wilson, the motion man. Klein looks back side, sets up a screen. Hubert, and another terrific defensive play by this Arkansas squad. Tevin Mitchell, the freshman from Mansfield, Texas, makes the tackle in space. You talk about staying home. Watch to the bottom of your screen, number eight, Tevin Mitchell. Watch what he does. Flow goes away. He stays behind, sees him set it up, slips the block inside by number 50, Nick Pitts, and makes the play on Huber. For Dorr. Adams will get a shot from the 31. And Adams gets to the 39, a 52-yard punt and a nine-yard return. So with the score 13-0, coming up the K-State defense trying to keep this team in the game. Tonight's game is sponsored by Buick. See real stories of human achievement on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. By Pizza Hut. Right now get any pizza for just 10 bucks. Only your Pizza Hut. And by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. Welcome back. Coming up at the half, it's the Pizza Hut Halftime Show with Kevin Frazier, Marcus Allen, and Daryl Johnston. They'll have first half highlights, opinions, and analysis. Seven minutes to play in the second quarter. 13-0. Arkansas with the lead and the football. As they start at their own 39. And Bob Petrino has made some sweeping changes with this team. And one of them starting to play dividends already as they pitch it to Adams. And Adams tries to turn the corner. And drop around the line of scrimmage by Arthur Brown. So some new coaches on this Arkansas squad charge. And you're talking about sweeping changes paying dividends? You talk about Paul Haynes, the defensive coordinator, who has the Arkansas defense playing so well. That's him in the box making calls, but he's doing it in the lingo of Arkansas. He doesn't have his new stuff in. Reggie Johnson, who was right next to him, he's the linebacker's coach. So if he gets stuck with a call, Reggie puts it into Arkansas language for him. They throw it far side. A Charles breaks a tackle. So defensive coordinator Will Robinson moved on. Paul Haynes, who spent the last seven years at Ohio State and coached with Petrino in the NFL with the Jacksonville Jaguars, was named the defensive coordinator. Offensive coordinator Garrett McGee was named the coach at Alabama Birmingham. Paul Petrino's brother. Bobby Petrino's brother Paul rather comes back after spending two seasons at Illinois so two coordinators out two coordinators in at Arkansas third and six to 43 Wilson stepping up with a lane and he gets inside Kansas State territory down to the 42 Nigel Malone tripping him up it's a 14 yard game and one of the things that goes along with Tyler Wilson with his toughness is his imagination now. Watch it come out. He told us in our meeting, I have to do a better job of using my legs when the opportunity presents itself. So far tonight, he's doing an excellent job of that. Open lane, he finds it, and runs tough for a first down. And a flag on the play. Before the snap, charge timeout, Kansas State. A third and final timeout. 5.33 to go, and now Kansas State out of timeouts here in the first half. Arkansas driving once again, and as you take a look at some of the coaching changes that have taken place late in the season. And what's interesting is you've outlined it, Gus. All right, Paul Petrino comes back. He's going to call right here. All right, he is the, he's in the ear of his brother, Bob telling him tendencies, what he sees, and Bob Petrino really trusts his judgment. He may not call the exact play he wants right then and there, files it away, he'll call it later. Steve Caldwell, we saw on that list, has moved to special teams coach. Well, he was already on the staff. Paul Petrino was on the staff, went to Illinois, has come back, familiarity. You mentioned, Gus, that, that Paul Haynes, the new D coordinator, worked with Bob Petrino in Jacksonville. 
familiarity. He knew who he was, knew what he was getting. And what does he say he wants? Sound and simple. And plenty of effort. And so far, the Arkansas defense is giving him exactly that. First down and 10 at the 43. Wilson scrambled and dumps it off. Johnson in the flats. But an interesting question, Charles. You finish your season at Arkansas 10 and 2. Your only loss has come to the two best teams in the nation, LSU and Alabama. And you fire your defensive coordinator. He knew that wasn't the direction he wanted to continue to go. And he knew that with a month time, month's time, and recruiting, he wanted a new coach in place to start moving forward towards 20, 2012. Second down and eight at the 41. Wilson hands it off to Johnson. And Johnson trying to hurdle, but nothing doing. David Garrett took on a block and made the play a loss of four. This Kansas State defense, they're keeping this team in the game. Without a doubt. And David Garrett, who last year played a lot of linebacker, despite being 5'9", 175, his teammates call him Rat. Textbook tackle. Takes down Dennis Johnson. Third down and 12 at the 45. Ronnie Wingo back in the game. Tyler Wilson going for the home run. Jarius Wright's name. One of the most prolific receivers in all of college football. He remained patient. Oh, and the extra point block. Picked up. Malone. For two. Malone. Kansas State gets on the board the hard way. Another blocked kick. That's Rafael Gidry. That would be his fifth block of the season. He blocked two field goals against Texas Tech. Watch coming up the middle, 94. Look at him. Shoots the gap. As he says, makes himself skinny. Makes himself small. And gets by and envelops it. He had never, the school record four block kicks in the season. He had never blocked a kick in three previous seasons of Kansas State. Only nine tackles for the year, but how about this value? That was his fifth on the season, and it gains his team points. And boy, a team that was struggling, that gives them a new life. Huge play, giving this Kansas State squad a little bit of momentum. 19 to two. <laughs> Did you see how he turned his body? He talks to me, that's the only talk about linemen sliding through, making themselves skinny or small to get through the gap. He has a knack for it. Two field goals blocked at Texas Tech. He was Big 12 deep, uh, Special Teams Player of the Week that week. And in addition, he's blocked two extra, two extra points throughout the season. That was the third extra point he's blocked. But even more, not only does this Kansas State squad finally get on the board with 4-10 remaining in the second quarter, they will get the football back as well with a chance to put more points on the board. Jermaine Thompson, Chris Harper are back deep. Without a doubt, the defensive side of the football, despite being down 19 to two, has been what's kept Kansas State going in this game. This could be worse. Remember, two opportunities they held the field goals. Razorbacks send it away. Out of the end zone once again. Zach Hopper has been drilling the football tonight. I think they're playing a little Tampa 2 here because watch Arthur Brown. He's going to end up running down the pipe in the middle of the field trying to run with Jarius Wright. Ty Zimmerman, number 12, is a safety back deep. And look at this. With that matchup, Jarius Wright on Arthur Brown. Tyler Wilson identifies and goes to the right man for the touchdown. Jarius Wright, first team, all SEC. What a game he had right here against Texas A&M. 
13 catches, 281 yards, and two touchdowns. One of those was a heads-up play off of a fumble that he fell on a ball in the end zone to preserve the touchdown. So let's see if Colin Klein can get the offense going. Klein winds up, throws, nice catch. Sheldon Smith hauling it in, first down for the Cats. And this is not supposed to be a strength of Colin Klein's, and I mean throwing the football. But now he has to turn it into one. Under four minutes to go, they could use some points and extra momentum going into the half after the extra point block and score. Klein, three for eight, 22 yards. He'll run it this time with a hole. Crosses the 40 and gets to the 42. Eric Bennett with the tackle, a gain of eight. So a gain of 14, a gain of eight on the first two plays. And if Arkansas has any type of a letdown, Kansas State will make you pay for it. They are a team that competes on every snap, and not every, every down is a throwing down here. Second down and two at the 42. 3.20 to go. Kansas State out of timeouts. And Klein surveying the field. And dumps it out of bounds. Good coverage downfield. Smart play by Colin Klein moving out of the pocket. And you see why he had to throw the football away. Jericho Nelson, 31. Then out on the corner, the number 21, Darius Winston. 14, Eric Bennett underneath. Third down, two at the 42. Klein runs it. Klein lowers his shoulder, and he'll get close to that first down. As D.D. Jones almost stopped him from getting close. Jones has been getting a lot of pressure into the backfield this evening. But you saw an example of just how strong Colin Klein is. Because that was D.D. Jones, you said, right? 6'5", 307 listed. He ran through his tackle to pick up the first down. First down at the 44. 253 to play, second quarter. Klein looking. And Klein wants to run it again, and this time is gobbled up. Byron Jones, the sophomore from Junction City, Arkansas, making the tackle. And don't forget, folks, coming up at halftime is the Pizza Hut halftime show with Kevin Frazier, Marcus Allen, and Daryl Johnston. We'll have first half highlights, opinions, and analysis and performances by both bands. Second down and 12 to 42. Remember, Allen and Johnston predicted that Kansas State would win this game. Hubert out of bounds. It'll be interesting to see their comments after one half of play, which has been a very sloppy first half, unfortunately, for the Wildcats. Which is very uncharacteristic for them because they're usually the ones that force the other team into sloppy play. But how about the tackling by Arkansas? We talked about Paul Haynes. One of the things that attracted Bob Petrino to him, how well his secondary tackled at Ohio State. It's carrying over tonight to Arkansas. Third down, six at the 48. Klein pumping and dumps it incomplete. Kansas State with a decision to make now on fourth and six with 140 to go, and they will make the best decision possible and put it away with Ryan Doerr. Most prudent. Get rid of the football. Make them go the long field. Don't turn it over to them here at midfield, especially as quick strike as Arkansas is. Although punting to Joe Adams, <laughs> that could be fraught with disaster too. Ryan Doerr is sixth punt, standing at the 34. Spiraling kick over the head of Adams. Takes a bounce and will be down inside the 15. 39-yard punt. Nicely done by Ryan Doerr, the junior from Katy, Texas. 127 to play in the first half of the 76th AT&T Cup Bowl. Kevin Marcus and Darrell will be with us at halftime. We'll have an opportunity to see the seniors and hear them talk about playing in their final game. 
Let's see what Coach Petrino decides to do here. Oftentimes, in this situation, backed up, you run some type of a draw or a screen, and if you get decent yardage, you may start your offense. Tyler Wilson, 8 of 12, 79 yards. He'll throw it. Wilson, again, Adams! Oh! Tyler Wilson threw a strike, and Joe Adams just couldn't hold on. And I think the reason why is watch Tyson Hartman number two. What he ends up doing as he turns him around is watch his body come in front and help obscure the vision of Joe Adams and gets a hand on it. That's good hustle and recovery by Tyson Hartman on what should have been a huge strike for Arkansas. Second down and 10 at the 13. This time he'll jump it off. Bingo. And he steps out of bounds. Clock will stop at 113. You mentioned Bobby Petrino with that killer instinct. Really trying to put as much distance between his team and Kansas State going for those big plays. And what it also tells you is how much he trusts his quarterback with the football, Tyler Wilson. Because in that situation, a turnover can lead to bed to lead the points for Kansas State. He trusts him to take care of it and put Arkansas in a good spot. Third down and six. Wilson in trouble. Kansas State says they have it, and they do. What a play. Adam Davis recovers it. Watch Wilson in the pocket, and the pressure comes inside. Really well played there because number 97, Adam Davis, spins him down and knocks the ball free. And when the ball's not free, that's when Kansas State rallies to the football, wins the battle below. Adam Davis, another big play. Remember the big tackle earlier on third and short? This time he knocks it free and gives Kansas State an opportunity before the half ends, before it's recovered by number 40, Ryan Mueller. First down and 10 at the 12. Golden opportunity for K-State. No timeouts. Klein running. And they're going to have to get to the line of scrimmage quickly. Under a minute to go for Coach Snyder. So what's the strategy here? You have no timeouts. Worst case scenario, you want three points. You want three worst case scenario. That would be a win for Arkansas. Colin Klein, any type of run pass option, you might see it here. Second down and nine. Klein steps up in the pocket. Klein trying to make something happen. At the five, goes down at the two. 30 seconds to go. A first down. The clock will stop until the ball's reset. And that gives Kansas State a chance to get to the line of scrimmage. Arkansas. And now Arkansas calls a timeout. Charge timeout to Arkansas. They call him the Honey Badger in Manhattan. And look at how hard he runs as he gets through. Nice fake, and then he runs through the tackle by Alonzo Highsmith, spins past Tremaine Thomas before he's finally put down at the end. See, as he spins through Thomas as he brings him down, and then it looks like Bennett on the backside. But how determined a run was that by Colin Klein to pick up the first down and make it first and goal? Excuse me, it was 34, Jerry Franklin. So now with 30 seconds and no timeouts, they can still run the power run if they want to. They'll just have to hustle back to the line of scrimmage. Keep in mind, if Kansas State can score, they will get the ball to start the second half because they deferred after winning the coin toss to begin the game. First down and goal at the two. Delicate, delicate situation for K-State. And we are trying to determine what's taking place. It looks like a review the spot of the football. I think what they're trying to determine is where he went down, and they think he might be down short of the first down. So let's see where Colin Klein was tackled. 
terrific run. One we've seen all year long from him. Knee down there, and then as he falls forward, so it's the spotting of the football, which may be a little bit short of the first down when they review it and respot the ball, because there's the knee down. Ball's there. They'll probably place it somewhere about halfway between. Right there is where the knee is down, and that's where the ball is. All right, let's bring in our rules analyst, Mike Pereira, who's in the booth with us for the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, hey, good stop by Jimmy Augustin, the uh, replay official. You know, the knee's down. He's actually at about a three-and-a-half-yard line, had to get almost to the two. So what they're going to do is reset this back down. Won't be a first down, and um, I think it goes back down to, what, a, a fourth down, a third down play? A fourth down play, actually. All right, Gus Johnson along with Charles Davis and Mike Pereira. And what do you think? What, what takes place here, guys? Yeah, you, you know, it's we were all caught up in the action of the great run, but uh, Augustin upstairs, when they showed that replay from the side, he's the one that caught that with that left knee being down. And so that's where they'll reset the ball. In. And the good thing for Kansas State is it'll be a third down with an opportunity to pick up the first down. No timeouts left. If they go here, get a first down, the clock stops. So it's one of those natural timeouts if you hustle to the line of scrimmage yes. and make it work for your offense. The key is they're going to have to get to the line of scrimmage and get set because once the referee blows his whistle, he'll start the clock since they have no timeouts left. So here's where he goes yeah. down, Mike. Look at the left knee After right there. Review, the runner was down short of the line of the game. As a result, it'll be third down, half a yard to go at the three-yard line. Still charge timeout to Arkansas. So Kansas State still with an opportunity to pick up a first down, which would momentarily stop the clock. And, and, and now Kansas, I mean, actually at Arkansas, stay with the timeout, so you won't get a restart of the clock. And if you're Kansas State, ball in the hand of your best player, wouldn't surprise me to see a power run here to pick up the, to pick up the first down. Schubert in the backfield. Fly rolls out of the pocket. Fly looks backside wide open. Touchdown! Andre McDonald, the tight end. And Kansas State back in business. What a nice call. Bill Snyder and his offensive staff. Here's McDonald, 18. He's going to go through the traffic here because the motion goes away. So instead of the power run to pick up the first down, they go sprint right, throw back motion to the left side, and McDonald's wide open for the touchdown. So with 25 seconds remaining in the first half after a sluggish start, Kansas State with an opportunity to get back in this game, capitalizing off the late turnover. And right now, the score, 19-9. We talked about toughness on the Kansas State side at the start of this show. It's not just the physical toughness. It's the mental toughness. Arkansas just stung them again with a long touchdown pass. They don't drop their heads. They continue to compete. Raphael Guidry blocks the extra point. They turn it into two points. They get a sack when Arkansas tries to attack on their last drive. Knock the ball free by Adam Davis. Puts them in business. And Colin Klein takes them downfield and throws a touchdown pass. But you could just feel the momentum shifting in this football game. Remember, Kansas State will have the football to start the second half. And the test now goes to Arkansas because we've seen Kansas State handle the mental side of being down. Arkansas has blown a big lead of 19 to 0. How will they pick themselves up probably after the half and come out for the second half and see if they're ready to go? The Cats send it away. And they will start Wade up the sideline. And Wade gets to the 30. Well, Wade with the 22-yard return with 20 seconds to go. Arkansas with two timeouts. As Tyler Wilson prepares to come back onto the field. And Gus, this Kansas State team, we keep talking about them. We look at Wilson's numbers for the first half. They've been down by 13 or more points in the first half three times this year and rallied in every game to take the lead. They lost Oklahoma ultimately in Oklahoma State. 
but they beat Texas A&M after being down 14 to 0 in four overtimes. Off first down. Wilson looking. Wilson gets down. Whoa. He gets to the 40. Our coach Tim Brewster told Tyler to get down quicker in our meeting. And right now an injured player on the field, Meshack Williams. Meshack Williams, as you noted, chasing him, and it, he ended up getting it from Emmanuel Lamour, number 23, his own teammate, trying to help with the tackle. As Tyler Wilson went down, Lamour, who his teammates called too tall because of his length, playing the linebacker position, tall and lanky, unable to get down far enough to contact Tyler Wilson, ends up hitting his own teammate, Meshack Williams. Looks like Tyler Wilson did get down quick enough because if not, that could have been a sandwich as Meshack Williams, a junior from Sylvester, Georgia, junior college transfer. And I know we're doing a great job of educating the kids on contact points, staying away from the head, trying to keep them down. That was an accidental one, and we're talking about usually to the opponent. In this case, it was teammate to teammate, helmet to helmet contact. And we got Lamour down who hit Meshack Williams, both of them down. Bill Snyder out there checking on his players, which you and I have talked about offline, Gus, is something that when we watch these games and that coach goes out there to show the proper compassion for his players, we believe that's what it's supposed to be like because we know that's what he told those kids' parents when he came to recruit them. And coach Snyder is a hard-nosed coach. Everybody in college football knows it, 72 years old, but his players love him and he loves his players. And that's evident. Ten seconds to play in the first half. We'll step away momentarily. Arkansas up 19-9. They want to make sure that the player gets all the proper uh, treatment. And these crews practice this and practice this, you know, so often before the game. They do such a good job. And you see they've taken the face mask off because they have to be so careful with head and neck injuries to make sure everything goes the right way. And you're exactly right about these medical crews. They practice these situations over and over, and they're equipped for it and ready to go. And we're fortunate that they are. And I love where football is gone, where we err on the side of this caution, as opposed to the good old days where it's, hey, you're tough, get up and let's go. That's not how it works. And this is nice. And not only in college football, in the NFL, the same kind of procedures take place on a regular basis. So Meshack Williams. And he's a very valuable player for them. He leads this team in sacks and in tackles for loss. Okay, we will step away one more time. Back after this. Welcome back. The Cowboys Stadium, 19-9, hour score. Arkansas with the lead. Meshack Williams being delicately handled as they prepare to put him on the cart and take him into the locker room for evaluation. with the thumbs up. Some relief for both sides of the field. The thumbs up for Mijak Williams. And Gus, this is a challenge for the coaches because they have to go forward while they're concerned about their player. So I know that's a difficult task for a coach to try and keep your team up when they're concerned about their teammate. And as soon as we have information on his status, we will pass it along. So Coach Schneider sees one of his top backups go off the field 19-9. Williams raising his hand 
the Wildcat sign. Second down and one at the 40. Well, when they were aggressive last time, they lost the ball on a fumble. But in this field position, Bob Petrino might want to try and heave one downfield again. Wilson, pump fake, looks back side, going for it all again. Incomplete. Great coverage by Nigel Malone, intended for Kobe Hamilton. They tried the All-American side. Nigel Malone, seven interceptions this year, coming out of junior college. Led the Big 12. He, he has a great ability. He knows how to bait you as well. Does a nice job of it. And what I like about him when I watch him on tape is he looks like a complete corner. He comes up and tackles. They use him on the corner blitzes as well as his coverage skills. Should be the final play of the first half. And it's a running play. Ronnie Wingo. And that's the end of the first half. Arkansas got out front quickly. But Kansas State... Got a couple of good bounces and reeled them in. 19-9, our halftime score. Kansas State will have the ball to start the second half. We'll be back with a Pizza Hut halftime show with Kevin Frazier, Marcus Allen, Moose, right here in Dallas after these messages from your local Fox station. Welcome back to the 76th AT&T Cotton Bowl. Two top 10 teams battling Kansas State and Arkansas. 19-9 our score as we prepare to start the third quarter. Gus Johnson along with Charles Davis. CD, very interesting first half for a number of reasons. Yeah, indeed, because it was hard to get a flow going, especially for Kansas State. They, they hurt themselves in the first half. But the other part of it is Arkansas has limited them in a big way, yet they're in a fight. You would think Arkansas would be up with a shutout, but the reason they weren't is because they gave up stuff late in the first half. And as we went through the first half, Gus, and watched things, it got going for Arkansas with the punt return. Joe Adams, the Jet, takes it in. And then they came back with a big strike. You talked about Jarius Wright not being called and his name not being called. There was a touchdown, but in the ensuing point after touchdown, Raphael Gidry blocks it. Kansas State gets two. And then a fumble by Tyler Wilson on the play by Adam Davis. And a touchdown for Kansas State to take us to 19-9. to All right, that brings us to the four first-half statistics. And this is what throws you right here. 60 total yards on 31 offensive plays for Kansas State. They're down in every category, yet they're right there in the game. Credit their defense in the first half where they limited Arkansas to two field goals in touchdown scoring situations. The blocks point after touchdown for two points. They hung in there tough, and they've given their team an opportunity. So we start the second half. Kansas State, who deferred in the first half, will get the football. We will see if they can continue to build on that late second quarter momentum which started with the block extra point and the result was two points their first points of the game so Tremaine Thompson and Chris Harper back deep Zach Hocker will tee it up and the second half underway a live drive kick that may go out of bounds and does so now Kansas State will get the football Please at the 40. Kicking team. Ball will be placed first and 10 at the 40-yard line. Kansas State. Let's go downstairs to Coach Tip Brewster. Thank you, Gus. And talking to Bobby Petrino at the half, he said that they cannot turn the ball over. Huge emphasis in the game. They must continue to play great first down defense. For Kansas State, too many third and longs. They've only got 60 total yards. Colin Klein's going to have to run for some yards, and those receivers are going to have to make some plays for him. All right, thank you very much, Coach. It 
the first half, especially in the first quarter, Kansas State completely out of sync. They look like a team that hadn't had a chance to play in a game in a month. Penalties, drop passes. But now, let's see where they start here at the fourth. Hubert in the backfield, play action. Klein rolling out, dumps it off. Nice catch, Tannehill to get out of bounds. As he crosses the 45 to the 46, Jericho Nelson with the tackle. Coach Brewster outlined the terrific first down defense that Arkansas played in the first half. But the last taste in the Arkansas defense's mouth, a touchdown against them going into the half. Then their kicker kicks it out of bounds to start the second half, and Kansas State with a nice first down play. The momentum swinging Kansas State's way. Second down and four. Colin Klein complete, completed his first pass of the second half. This time he decides to run it and picks up a first down and more. As he crosses midfield, gets inside Arkansas territory for game nine. This is just like a tailback lead if he's a running back. Watch Hubert lead him into the hole, but watch the patience of Colin Klein. Waits for the blocks to form, sees it, sips his way through. A little extra power at the end for another first down for Kansas State. From the 45. Wilson and Hubert. And the offset eye behind Klein. Play clock winding down. They get it off. Option. Here's the pitch. Huber trying to break it back. Great pursuit by Arkansas. Leading the way to Nereus Wright. That's a loss of seven. And coaches on both sides of the ball always talk about winning first down. This is a huge win on first down for Arkansas because the play's made back here because no one goes so far away that when he has to reverse field that they're not home. They're back at home. Excellent job. Anytime you play option football, you have to be what is called gap sound. All gaps were covered by Arkansas's defense. Second and 17. Klein looking to the sideline. Fires. Cut. Beautiful throw and beautiful catch. Tremaine Thompson. A gain of 21. First down. K-State. Let's go back to the first series of the game and Tremaine Thompson dropped one that he probably should have had. We start the first series of the second half, and he flips the script and turns all the way around and comes up with one that's a difficult catch. K-State looks locked and loaded now. First down at the 31. Hubert with room, spinning, and goes down to the Arkansas 20. And he's close to a first down. Eric Bennett makes the tackle. This Kansas State team, and we don't know how this drive will ultimately end, but every team that ever plays Kansas State that gets a lead is all regretted not putting them away when they had an opportunity. This Kansas State team is like zombies. You can do what you want, but you cannot kill this team off. First down at the 21. Klein runs it over the right side. Squares his shoulders. Klein gets out of bounds. At the six, Jerry Franklin ushers him out of bounds. But right now, this Kansas State team starts the second half with great rhythm. Watch the zone read by Colin Klein. Sees it, and he gets two pullers coming at him. You see, Offner, 75, out there leading. Really well done, and he runs through a tackle by Eric Bennett and holds the football. Opening drive of the second half for Kansas State, which began at their own 40 after Arkansas kicked the opening kickoff out of bounds. Klein again, touchdown pass. And they're popping their collars now. K-State right back in this game. This is just simply going to be quarterback power because he's going to fake it in front. Now watch. He just follows Huber right there. There's a block, and then he steps through with a nice little jump cut at the end where he jumps from one side to the other to make a tackler miss to get into the end zone. The 
Puts the point up and good. Record tied touchdown for Colin Klein. But more importantly, 1916, we've got a ball game in Big D. Welcome back where the great views from just above the field come from our AT&T aerial cam. Three-point ball game now, 1916. As Kansas State scores on their opening drive of the second half, Colin Klein ties Ricky Williams with another touchdown, 27th this season. And also the national quarterback record set by Ricky Dobbs of Navy. Remember, Ricky Williams didn't get bowl game benefit in his touchdown numbers. He had two in his bowl game. Here's Wayne returning it from the 10. And he loses an edge and gets down at the 25. Let's go downstairs to our Dale Johnson with an injury update. Thank you, guys. Well, no new information on me, Shaq Williams. As soon as we find out some news, we will immediately update you. But I, I agree with you right now, Charles. This is one of those games that's turning into Kansas State's favor right now. Who would have thought that that block kick by Raphael Guidry and the scoop and score by Nigel Malone would turn the tide the way it has? And right now, we have to find out Arkansas's toughness, which they have to display because Kansas State has matched them now. First down to the 25. Ball caught by Jarius Wright, a second catch of the game, a flag on the play. As Wright gets up to the 35 before being ridden down. I think they got a little cage. Watch the tackle by Chapman, three. See right there, hand on the face mask. That's for the flag. Ball. Face mask, defense number 27. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. It's actually number three, Alan Chapman, who, who made the play. They hung it on David Garrett, but number three, Alan Chapman. Nonetheless, the penalty goes for Arkansas to give them a little extra breathing room and extra an excellent field position out near midfield. Chapman, a junior from San Francisco. First down at the 49. Opening drive of the second half for Arkansas. Tyler Wilson. Audible. They hand it off, Wingo, and Wingo dropped. Great job, Tyson Hartman, folks. The senior from Wichita has been all over the field to free safety. So watch Tyson Hartman here because he follows David Garrett into the hole. And Kiero Small, the fullback, 36, gets Garrett, but he doesn't get Hartman, and Hartman puts him down. A loss of one, second and 11. Wilson, incomplete, trying to drop that one in to Jarius Wright, but a little too much on it, and that brings up third down and long. And now the, the confidence and the looseness of this Arkansas team that we saw develop as this game went along is being tested now. Playing a little bit tighter here as this game is tightened up with this big third down call coming up. They need 11 at the 48. The first down marker is at the Kansas State 41. Joe Adams is in the slot at the bottom of your screen. He's been quiet recently. Tyler Wilson steps up, wants to run. Wilson dives forward. It'll depend on the spot. I don't think he'll have enough for the first down. He won't, based on the spot that I see, which brings up a decision for Bobby Petrino. Because Tyler Wilson going for it, but right there, number 40, Ryan Mueller gets enough of his ankle to trip him up. If he doesn't touch him there, he gets the first down and more. Good hustle by Mueller. This is probably too far for a field goal, too short for a punt. Watch them go for it. So Arkansas electing to go for it on fourth down and two at the 43. Two tight ends for the Razorbacks. I don't run it here if I'm Arkansas, I throw it. And a timeout call. First timeout, Arkansas. Their first timeout. 9.42 to play third quarter, 1916. This is a Cotton Bowl on Fox. 
The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by Pizza Hut. Right now, get any pizza for just 10 bucks, only at your Pizza Hut. But they must have heard our coach Brewster talking in the break because he opined that it was a bad decision to go for it here because of momentum. He would have punted the football, and Bobby Petrino made that decision after the timeout to change up and punt the football. So here's the end over end Australian kick, which takes a bounce and goes dead at the two. Wise decision. A lot of things looking up for K-State right now. Here's Daryl Johnston. Yeah, Gus, the most important thing, Meshack Williams, some good news to report. He was taken to Arlington Memorial Hospital. He has movement and feeling in all his extremities. They ran a few tests. They want to do a few more, but he's likely to be released tonight. That's fantastic. That's, I mean, it can't get much better than that. We have a, a lot of precautionary stuff to get him there, get him taken care of. The number one thing, he's going to be okay. So now, K-State with the football at their own two in the first half, only 60 yards. Their first possession of the second half, they march it down the field for 70. Wilson and Hubert in the backfield. Hubert goes outside, spinning, and Hubert gets to the nine-yard line, dropping that shoulder on Eric Bennett, and that is a gain of eight. And this is the danger zone because you have someone penetrate the front line. You can get the safety. He stepped out of it, a quick attempt to tackle there. And look at the move to make the, make the miss on the corner by number 28, Greg Gatson, before Bennett puts him down. But that's a nice first down play. We've talked all night long about winning on first down. That's a win for Kansas State to get him out of the shadow of the end zone. Huber came into this game with just under 1,000 yards rushing. 989, second down and three. Again, skip it. And he'll be close to the first down. Jerry Franklin, the middle linebacker, wrapping him up. And I'm not sure there's a more important third down that Arkansas has played on defense today. Well, they got the first down. I thought it was going to be a little short. So let me guess what? It's not that important now. So now they got to go back and win on first down again. But Kansas State starting to move the ball steadily against this Arkansas defense. They need to hold field position for their offense and get the ball back. From the 13, first down. Three on the play clock. And they get it off just in time. He swings it out. And this is Sheldon Smith. And Sheldon Smith knocked out of bounds. He'll gain a couple. I know they don't want to use timeouts unnecessarily, but that play just never felt good. Just by the whole setup, you mentioned him taking the play clock all the way down. It seemed very herky-jerky and not really in sync. And the end result reflected that. Second down and eight of the 15. Trips at the top of your screen. Fine, underneath, incomplete. Intended for Broderick Smith. Smith looked like he had an opportunity to catch that football. Let's see if Tevin Mitchell, number eight, got a hand on the football or a hand in front of his face. Yes, yes he did. He was able to get a hand inside and knock it away. Nicely done by Tevin Mitchell. Now we're back to that third down I was talking about a series ago. Third and eight at the 15. Fly. Under pressure. And he skips that one. Chris Hopper, the intended receiver, Jake Beckett, with pressure on the quarterback. And that's why he skipped it, because as he tried to step into the throw, Jake Beckett hit him from the backside, number 91. What a legacy player at Arkansas, grandfather. Father was all Southwest Conference Center. Now an attorney in Little Rock, uncle. All played at Arkansas before Jake Beckett. Joe Adams, who's already returned one 
51 yards on a punt. Return for touchdown. Ryan Door tries to hang this one high in the air and does. And it is fielded at the 41, a 42-yard punt. What excellent field position for this man, Tyler Wilson. He showed a neck for throwing the long ball. This February, NASCAR's best will converge at the Daytona International Speedway. NASCAR's biggest race, defending champion Tony Stewart and rookie Danica Patrick highlight a full field of drivers looking to take home auto racing's ultimate prize. Fox Sports is proud to bring you exclusive coverage of the Daytona 500 on February 26th. The Super Bowl of auto racing. First down and 10 of the 42 for Arkansas. Wilson, play fake, with time, delivers. Oh, what a great catch by his tight end, Chris Gregg. Thrown in front of him, and the big fella with great hands and balance. We've been waiting for this all night. A little bit more of Chris Gregg. They actually made some plays on the football when he was the primary receiver in the first half. And I was at practice on Tuesday. Nice throw, but if he keeps him on his feet, he's still running. First catch. Now Adams outside, and he'll gain seven and a half, maybe eight, as David Garrett pushes him out of bounds. And Gus, we talked about Greg at the top of the show that there would be more opportunities for him, the third leading receiver for Arkansas. I was at practice on Tuesday, and he ran a route that brought him open. And as they got to the sideline, Jarius Wright told him, we're going to get you open on game night because they're going to be looking at us a lot. Be prepared. He was on the last catch. Second down and two. His quarterback also praising his tight end, saying that he's one of the most reliable receivers on this team. Green running the football. Broderick Green stopped by Trey Walker, the outside linebacker. Broderick Green bruising running back, 6'2", 244. Trey Walker standing up, watches flow, shoots the gap. And you talk about bruising. It takes a lot to get Broderick Green down. He's a good, tough, short yardage runner, a transfer from USC, who battled back from a knee injury in the spring, ACL surgery. They didn't expect to have him all season long. And he returned in time for the Texas A&M game in the regular season. Came into this game with 216 yards, rushing on 61 carries. Wilson over the middle, finds a man. It's Adams, and he's bumped and taken down. Great job by Lemur. Emmanuel Lemur, the senior from West Palm Beach, Florida. Junior college transfer. So that makes it second down and 12 of the 24. As Childs goes to the top of your screen along with Wright. And Adams. Empty backfield. Wilson. Fires in the corner. Incomplete. Greg almost had it. Bobbled it at the end. But what an effort. See Greg leaning back. Trying to possess it as he goes down, unable to complete the catch. Had it in the end zone, unable to haul it in. Tyler Wilson bought a little extra time in the pocket with some depth footwork in order to get the ball downfield to the end zone. So a big third down at 12 of the 22. Wilson over the middle. A money throw on third down and 12. Watch Tyler Wilson in the pocket. Watch as he looks to the right. Okay, see the vision? He's looking there. Then he comes back to the left side. Why does he look right? To move the defenders in that direction and create a throwing lane back to the left for the completion for the first down. Wilson, 13 of 21, 124 yards and a touchdown. No picks. First down and goal to the nine. The handoff to Green. 
And he'll get inside the five. Kansas State in the red zone has been bent but don't break as Hartman is down. And that could be a huge loss for the Cats. And we obviously hope he's okay. If nothing else, he has to come out for a play now. And that's a tough one because in this second and goal situation, this is the time they would throw the football. And you'd want Tyson Hartman on the field defending on that one. So they hope this young man's okay. He's played a whale of a game tonight. See him making the tackle as he goes through. It looks like the knee contacts the side of his head to put him down. We got a chance to spend a little time with him at the Cotton Bowl luncheon. And what a delightful young man. National Football Foundation scholar athlete, one of the top ones in the country, that has a postgraduate scholarship from that great group. He was a finalist for the Campbell Trophy, which is the academic Heisman Trophy in college football, awarded by the National Football Foundation. There's Coach Schneider out there checking on him again. And they help him up. Will Snyder holding his hand. Good job. Tough kid. Not only is he a smart kid, but he's a tough kid and a heck of a football player. Delightful young man. Really enjoyed my conversation time with him. I had to, I had to cut it short, though, because... He's so smart, he went right over my head with half the stuff he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> As I really enjoyed it, Tyson. Highly <laughs> doubt that. Really Austin. enjoyed it. Our nickname for Charles, folks, is either the Bomar Brain or Megamind. And, and look at this. Seven rushes, one pass in the red zone, only two field goals. I think they have to reverse that, and I think it starts here on this down. Roderick Green remains in the game. On second and goal at the fourth. Play action in the end zone. Out of bounds. Kobe Hamilton couldn't get a foot in. And in a sense, Tyler Wilson missed the layup because he was so wide open. He needs to just go ahead and stop the receiver in the back of the end zone and put it right on him. He threw it a little bit high. And watch, the momentum takes his receiver over the back line. So with Hartman. On the sideline, let's see if they go after the safety again. Matthew Pearson is the backup. Third and goal at the four. Ball start. Offense number 71. Five-yard penalty, still third down. So what they've done to replace Tyson Hartman, that was a tough penalty against Arkansas, obviously, as we look at the penalty situation, is they brought in their nickelback, Alan Chapman, to now play in, in, in the pass coverage against Arkansas in this situation. Bob Petrino, the play caller, he's got his brother Paul now in his ear. After he left Illinois, third down and goal at the nine. Empty backfield. Wilson over the middle. Caught. Hamilton touchdown. Razorbacks. Fourth receiving touchdown of the year for Kobe Hamilton. Wilson again in the pocket, looking, finds his guy, and delivers the strike. And the toughness question about Arkansas answering a little bit, answering the big challenge that Kansas State has put on them with a touchdown. Zach Hocker coming in. Extra point is good. 3.57 to play in the third. And the Razorbacks take a 26 to 16 lead. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic is sponsored by the Ford F-150. Available with the efficiency and power of EcoBoost by AT&T. Get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. And by new Dr. Pepper 10. 10 bold calories, 23 flavors. 26-16, Arkansas with the lead. 
here in the third quarter. Now, all season long, Fox Sports is the proud to support Dream Foundation, who are making dreams come true for adults facing a life-threatening illness. Please join us and support Dream Foundation. Text DREAM to 41518. That's 41518 to donate $10 and turn dreams into lasting memories. And if you don't know about this, foundation is terrific. And the best way that I can describe it to you, many of you know about Make-A-Wish which helps out the youngsters. This is for adults 18 and over who also are facing the same challenges in life and want their last dream to come true. So Arkansas responded. Kansas State, we will see. As Tremaine Thompson takes the knee and the Cats will get it at the 20. And let's go back, Gus, and talk about the team effort. These teams are playing, right? We're a team up here in the broadcast booth. Our partner, Tim Brewster, on a break, said, hey, I wouldn't go for it here. Arkansas, fourth and short. I would punt it, change field position, let my defense handle it. They did. They punted out to midfield, got great field position, went downfield and scored. So if Bobby Petrino had an ear towards Tim Brewster, credit him with an assist for listening and changing up from going for it to punting. They paid off for the Hogs. First down at the 20 for K-State. Clyde pulls it back. Klein looking to the sideline, and a catch is made. Tremaine Thompson, great of it, and gains 23. And you know what I like about this throw? You'll see the route by Thompson, 86, because he's going to come across the field. But what happens with the throw, he doesn't take him over the sideline. He stops him and gives him an opportunity to go down, slide, and catch the football. A lot of people look at it as that's not a great looking throw. It's the right throw. If he keeps it in the air, he takes him over the sideline and it's likely incomplete. Klein, four of six, 52 yards this half. He's gonna let it fly again. Klein muscles that one up to Broderick Smith who holds on to the ball for his seventh catch of the season and it's a gain of 15. He's not the most polished looking thrower you're going to see. Hence the Tim Tebow comparisons because they run it better than they throw it. And I asked him about throwing mechanics and he said, they've all made a decision that any throwing mechanics were not going to be done during the season. They would address those after the season, but he feels like he's become a better thrower through confidence and repetition throughout the season. First down, Clyde handing it off this time to Schubert and he slices his way. Close to a first down, gains a Jericho Nelson. Makes the tackle. This is a quarterback power play, because watch, he's gonna ride his, he's gonna ride the running back as he fakes it to Hubert. See, he stays with him, and because the defensive end widens out, he's able to stick it in his belly and take it inside for a nice run upfield. Good read by Colin Klein and John Hubert. Second down and short. They need two yards at the 34. Kansas State having no problems moving the football. Klein drops back, steps up, and is chopped down. Great job, second sack of the night for Jake Beckett. And he has been hell bent to get to the quarterback. And last series, he was the one who ended the series with this put big, put big hit on Colin Klein. Look at the coverage again. Where does he go with the football? Because that play was the companion play to the last run. The same ride, and then he stepped back to throw it, but Jake Beckett had other ideas and puts him down. Third down five of the 37. Clyde in the shotgun. Clyde throws a slant. Caught Chris Harper. No, they ruled it incomplete. So now, Kansas State has to make a decision. Because once again, probably too far, well, too far for a field goal. Probably in that punting range where it might be too short. The hard part, drop, it, yeah, sorry. Tell you what, a lot of drop passes by Kansas State tonight. That's really hurt them. And the hard part for Bill Snyder is, does he want to give the ball to Bobby Petrino with this type of field position? 128 to go in the third quarter. They're going for it. Fourth down and five. And Klein. Charge timeout. We'll call a timeout.
The last time a team thought about going for it and called timeout before the fourth down play was Arkansas in the last series and ended up punting the football. They changed their minds and punted it. We'll see if Bill Snyder does the same. Coach Brewster, are you there? Gus, I'm here. What do you think? Well, I, I think that the decision, again, here to go for it, the game is all about momentum swings. The momentum is all in Arkansas's favor. Right now, Bill Snyder's got to try to stem the tide. I, I, I agree with his decision to go for it here. Now, he may, he may, he may change as well. Yeah, the offense comes back over to the sideline. So now, because of this, Coach, if I'm Arkansas's defense, I play punt safe here. I want to make sure that I'm sound, playing for any type of a fake or trick play. All I want is the football at this point. So even the, even the snapper got the word late in running on the field, number 46. Door. They skip it to him. He picks it up. Nicely done by Ryan Gore. And he'll keep this one out of the end zone. Arkansas get it at the 20, a 17-yard net, but a nice job to handle that snap. Remember, Dalton Converse is playing for the first time this season tonight because of Marcus Height and his suspension from the team. And how about the hands by Door? Looked like a shortstop on that play. Stayed down on the football and grabbed it. I thought maybe Kansas State might want to take a penalty there and give themselves an extra five yards of room to punt the football because they were so short. They, you know, they hurt, they hurt them with the angle and the distance. Thought they might want to take that and try and get a few extra yards for Ryan Door. So from the 20-yard line for Tyler Wilson. And he hands it off. Wingo. And Wingo will pick up two. Wilson, six of nine, 61 yards this half with the touchdown. Kansas State goes to their nickel package. Ryan Mueller, number 40, comes into the game. He's listed as a backup linebacker. It's one of the smaller rush defensive tackles you will see in the game right there at 227 pounds. Second and eight. Wilson, incomplete, looking for Gregg. And he had pressure. Lamar in the backfield. And he lost Jarius Wright on the route, who slipped down and took himself out of the play, unable to stay on his feet. Great opportunity for Kansas State with 40 seconds to go in the third to get the ball back. But can they get off the field? On third down, Tyler Wilson will have something to say about it. Third and eight. They need to get to the 30 for first down. Three receivers at the top. Wilson sets up underneath, caught by Childs. First down, Arkansas. Greg Childs has been wonderful this evening. Coming back from knee surgery, he was their number one receiver, but didn't recover in time. And Wright and Adams passed him, rounding into form as he finishes out this season, getting his speed back. Runs a nice route, but Wilson finds him for the first down. A 15-yard gain on third and eight. Wilson again running, and this time he's dropped for a sack. That'll be Kibble. Ray Kibble, the senior from Houston, Texas, with the second sack of the season. And we've given a lot of credit to the coverage tonight for both teams. On that play, that was just good upfront rushing. They forced the play so fast, it really wasn't the coverage that did it. It was the front that got to him. And that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Fourth quarter coming up, folks. 26-16. Arkansas with the leads as we start the fourth quarter. Now let's go downstairs where our Kevin Frazier is standing by with Mark Kiefer from AT&T. Mark, you are the president of the customer service centers for AT&T. This is the 16th season that AT&T has been involved with the Cotton Bowl, but it goes well beyond just this football game. Oh, it absolutely does, Kevin. This is about opportunity for us. It's an opportunity to get back to our communities 
but particularly from an education perspective, uh, whether it's in junior high or high school or in the collegiate level, for us to help the young people of this country be prepared for success in the future. All right, you're also a college football fan. What do you think of the game so far? Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Two-point block and run back in. That's what it's all about. Mark, thanks so much. Let's send it back up to Gus. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. And Mark was talking about education. You know he got his undergraduate <laughs> degree in physics? Yeah. And then went to get his MBA. We were sitting in the smart row. Yes, we were. It was he, 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 we were bookended <laughs> by him and Tyson Hartman. Wow. We should have put them next to each other. And then I was sitting next to you. <laughs> and that hurt you. <laughs> Second down and 14. At the 33-yard line for Arkansas. Here come the Hogs. Wilson. Jump pass. Nice catch. Great athletic play by Tyler Wilson as Joe Adams makes the catch. And, and watch here, okay? That's Arthur Brown. You talk about an athletic play. Look at this. And look at Dennis Johnson going up trying to block him. And Tyler Wilson is not distracted, keeps his focus downfield, and completes the pass. Sammy Ball type play. Third down and two at the 45. Wilson to the sideline. right in heavy traffic okay how does he catch this one because it's into a two deep coverage man under man over the top arms in the way flailing in front of his vision Zimmerman number 12 Chapman number three and he hauls it in wow. Adams and Adams is taken down by David Garrett the senior from Cleveland Ohio Garrett's made some nice plays throughout the evening, both in the run game and in the pass game, knifing through. But I keep going back. How did he catch the football? Vision obscured. It ends up in his arms. A tremendous catch. Second down and 11 after the one-yard loss at the Kansas State 22 as we start the fourth quarter. Wilson in trouble and he'll dump it. And this would be interesting because he's in the, I thought he was in the pocket. And here it comes. See, he's in the pocket throwing the football, but he's got to say he's got a receiver there. They've got to determine if a receiver's in the area. Otherwise, it's grounding. Attention to grounding. Offense number eight. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Brings up third down. Put up about five yards. See, if he moves, he's, he's got to stay, he's got to be out of this box, really there, tackle to tackle. If he gets outside of that box, he can ground the football. But look where he is. Is he outside of it? I don't think he was. I think the officials had it right as he tried to move in that direction. Nope, caught in the box. The Kansas State defense doing a nice job bottling him up. But Tyler Wilson has been clutch in this second half. Third down and 22 at the 33. Three receivers at the bottom of your screen. Wilson looking to right up top. Incomplete, no flag. Now remember, you can have your hands on the receiver until the ball's in the air. So watch right number four working against Garrett 27. There's a hand. There's another hand. Ball's in the air. That's where you heard the reaction from the Arkansas crowd. But they determined it wasn't enough to impede the receiver. So that brings on Zach Hocker in to attempt a 50-yard field goal. His career long is 51. This is against Arkansas. They may have to change up and punt it. Ball start. Wow. Offense number 67. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. That's Alvin Bailey there. Second team all SEC offensive guard. Bobby Petrino not happy. Probably feels like his guy was drawn off. So Bailey's right in here. Yep, yeah, so he saw the movement from across the line and then he flinched. Gidry. 
And I think Coach Petrino may be directing some of that anger at the officials. So the fourth punt of the night for Dylan Breeding. Jermaine Thompson back deep. And Raphael Guidry affects another kicking situation for Arkansas. Aussie kick, end over in. Supposed to bounce back in, but gets into the end zone first. 38-yard punt, a net of 18. Coach Petrino, not a happy man. The Kansas State fans have been faithful. They believe in their team. They've got the ball right after this. All right, a look at our Jeep game summary. And Rafael Guidry's blocked PAT that turned into two points. Look at that. Since that time, Kansas State 160 of their 176 total yards. From the 20-yard line. Klein, 9 of 19, 92 yards passing. There's Guidry. He's affected two kicking plays tonight. Forced Arkansas to punt instead of a field goal attempt after he drew them off sides. Klein has rushed the ball 16 times for 42 yards and a touchdown. John Hubert in the backfield. Here's Hubert looking. Cuts it back in and gets to the 22. As Robert Thomas was there to stop him. Jake Beckett has been wreaking havoc, as you noted, in the backfield. He's taken this series off. If they do decide to throw the ball, can anyone rush the passer as Jake Beckett has rushed Colin Klein tonight? Second down and eight. Klein. To the sideline. Beautiful throw. Sheldon Smith picks up the first down. And boy, are they hitting on the field tonight. Charles Davis. When, they, when someone makes a catch or runs the ball, they rally to it. But watch Colin Klein in the pocket. I've mentioned, he's not the most polished passer in the world. But this year looked the part. Head to the left side, brings it back to the right side, sticks it on the check down to Sheldon Smith. Well done, Colin Klein. First down, Kansas State at the 31. Klein, the throw again. And another completion for Broderick Smith. You know, they, you've been saying that he might not be the most polished passer, but on this night, he is an effective passer. And that's all they've cared about. And we've seen that throughout this season. We've seen sequences of Colin Klein going 0 for 5, 0 for 7, 1 for 10. And then when you need it, he puts it on receivers, bam, 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 and they move down the field. And right now, his offensive line is giving him nice protection in the pocket. And I have to admit, they compare him to Tim Tebow. But it looks like he has a little bit better throwing motion than Tim Tebow. And they're going to take a timeout here. Look at how this ball ends up. That's a well-thrown ball and a nice catch by Brod Broderick Smith. And one of our colleagues knows Broderick Smith pretty well because he recruited him when he was head coach of the University of Minnesota. Let's see. Looks like he got the toe down first before the knee came down. Tim Brewster had Mr. Broderick Frederick Smith. Hugh, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Catch it to sideline. First down. So that catch is good, and they move on. But Tim Bruce recruited Broderick Smith, and he told me before this game he could have an impact. He's a terrific player when he's on the field this much of the year due to disciplinary reasons. So first down and 10 to the 45. Colin Klein hands it off. Hubert sweeping around the right side, and he'll go back with Alonzo Highsmith with the angle and the tackle. And Arkansas did not like what minimal pass rush was going on on this series. Look who came back on the field. 
Jake Beckett, the guy they've had trouble blocking all night, he's been coming usually from the blind side of Colin Klein. Zach Hansen, the tackle number 70, trying to handle it. Second down and 11. Here's Klein again. And he dumps this one. Incomplete. Looks like they were trying to set up a screen for Hubert. But Arkansas standing on the play. Pressured by Highsmith and D.D. Jones. And that brings up third down and 11. And Beckett also coming from the end. Tenarius Tank right. That was good pressure by the front four of Arkansas that threw the timing off on the play. Bay State needs to get to the Arkansas 45 for first down. Two for ten on conversion. They haven't found Chris Harper all night here at the top. Usually their go-to receiver. Clyde with time over the middle. Caught by Sheldon Smith. First down. What a catch by Smith. He took a shot. And Colin Klein delivers on third down once again. Right here. Watch him work inside. It's zone coverage. And as he goes in, Bennett makes a nice break on the ball with a big hit. But Sheldon Smith, he's got a new nickname, Pinball. Just bounces right off and keeps moving it downfield. Almost ran backwards and almost out of a first down catch. First down and 10 of the 45 for Klein. Back to throw it. Klein thinking about running it. And Klein taken down from behind. Take right. Good coverage, though, in the Arkansas secondary. The coverage has been good for most of the night, really by both teams, to allow the rush to get to the quarterbacks. Arkansas has found a few more openings downfield against Kansas State's defense. But overall, all night, I've been impressed with both sets of secondaries. Klein relying on his arm. He hasn't taken off or won the football as we expected him to this evening. But he may be due. Second and 13 at the 48. Rolls out of the pocket. And Klein decides to run it. And he'll get to the 42-yard line. Jericho Nelson defensively. That brings up another big third down for Kansas State. That last play had numerous options on it. Colin Klein running to the corner as you described. Also had a receiver coming underneath that he could have given him a shovel pass. If it was open, wasn't there, so Klein kept it and got to the corner. Sheldon Smith splits out wide at the top of your screen. Isaac Madison guarding him. Hubert out of the backfield as well at the very bottom of your screen. Empty backfield for Colin Klein on third and seven. Klein looking over the middle. Smith again. At the 29, Sheldon Smith on third and seven gets 14. And Smith has been terrific on this series. Top of your screen, 87 in white, six in red. This is what they call man-free coverage, cover one. Everyone in man-to-man -man with a safety over the top with no responsibility except to cover it by zone. Sheldon Smith wins that one at the line of scrimmage. That's what coaches call winning on the perimeter. Good job by Sheldon Smith on his route. First down of the 28. Now Klein handing it off. Hubert. As Jericho Nelson stops him, but how about Sheldon Smith? Three big catches on this drive. He had a nine-yard catch on second and eight. He had an 11-yard catch on third down and 11 for first down, and then a 14-yard catch on third down and seven. Still remember that big catch he had against Texas, which helped get them their first touchdown of the game. Second down and eight. Seems like Clyde and Smith are thinking with the same brain now. Klein wants to run it. Nothing. Great job by the Arkansas interior defense, Alonzo Heisman. 
Another third down. If Kansas State's going to throw the football from the pocket, there's one guy they've got to make sure they block, and that's Jake Beckett, number 91, the defensive end. See him over here working against Zach Hansen. Sheldon Smith at the bottom of your screen, number 87. Tannehill, the stand-up tight end, at the bottom as well. Third down and eight. Klein under pressure. Klein lets it go incomplete. And this may be a fourth down situation for Kansas State. They decided to bring a little extra pressure because watch in here. All right, right here is going to be High Smith also coming at Colin Klein. And Hubert moves inside to block Franklin, leaving Highsmith for a free run at the quarterback Klein with Beckett also back there. And they need the three points, so they bring on Kentelli. A 42-yard attempt. Got it up. Oh. No good. 6.36 to play in the fourth quarter. Kansas State comes up empty. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by AT&T. Get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. The great views from just above the field come from our AT&T aerial cam. 26-16 Arkansas with the lead and the football with 6 minutes and 36 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter of the AT&T Cotton Bowl. I don't expect Arkansas to just turn into a running team here where it's going to pound it into the line. They're going to want to bleed the clock by using first downs. Wilson to pass on first down. Over the middle, caught by Hamilton. Hamilton spins and gets to the 35 as Matthew Pearson stops him, but it's a gain of eight. And let's go down to the sideline and check in with our Daryl Johnston. Thanks, guys. Well, you guys have been talking about that matchup that Tyler Wilson keeps finding with Matthew Pearson. He's going to have that the rest of the game. Tyson Hartman is out. They've taken his helmet from him. He's not going to return the rest of the game. Thank you very much, Moose. And this kid's running like you used to. Green. The big fella. 36-yard game. Pearson with the tackle. And how about the blocking here? Kiero Small is going to lead into the hole, but look at the blocking the line of scrimmage. Everyone is matched up. Look at that. Everyone's got a man. And then the step over on the tackle by Garrett. Broderick Green with a huge explosive run. All the way down to the Kansas State 30, there's an injured player. An injured Kansas State player at the 35, and it's Lemur. The starting linebacker, senior. But how about the return of Broderick Green this year? They didn't expect him back all season long. Tore his ACL in spring practice. They didn't expect to see him at all. Incredible, diligent rehab to make it back. His first game back, two touchdowns against Texas A&M, running the football. Talk about a will to return to play. Broderick Green showed that this year. Green in this game, three carries, 43 yards. He's been terrific. As Emmanuel Lemur. He intended to. Coach Snyder on the field once again. And Lemur being helped up in a physical, physical, physical game tonight coach. former safety that they kind of had to convince to move the linebacker he's a little resistant at first wanted to be that tall safety ball hawk in the middle of the field and then they dropped him down to the linebacker spot and he became a big time playmaker for him part of that trio that all has nicknames and have been very productive Trey Walker known as the Deacon son of a preacher man Arthur Brown, the judge, by how he looks at you, feels like he's questioning you every time you talk to Arthur Brown. <laughs> they give you that look, they call him the judge. And they call Emmanuel Lamar too tall for his lanky 6'4", 225 frame. It was a too tall that played in this city once upon a time. 
and, and was quite productive in doing so. Ed Too Tall Jones, former defensive end with the Dallas Cowboys. So first down for Arkansas. And the Kansas State 30. 5.46 and counting for the Razorbacks with the 26-16 lead. Green remains in the game, and they give it to him. Green all the way down to the 11. Downhill running for the Razorbacks. A gain of 19. I love play callers without ego, meaning same play. Run. Bobby Petrino saw that play work to the other side. So instead of having to show everyone just how fancy he is as a play caller, let's just flip it. Opposite side, same call. Likes what his offensive line is giving him now. Green this time goes right. And Green will get inside the 10. Clock keeps running. As Jordan Velker makes the stop. And Broderick Green has given up nice running ability right now, but he's being helped by the lead guy. Number 36, Kiero Small, his fullback. Kiero didn't go to college right out of high school. Thought he wanted to work for a living, so his dad put him to work in his t-shirt shop. Guess what? I won't go to college yet. <laughs> That'll learn you. Second down and seven at the nine. Here's the pitch. Roderick Green stays in bounds. Does not get back to the line of scrimmage. Arthur Brown with the tackle. And this time, a Razorback getting up slowly. But the key on the play, as you noted, Grant was, was right up here. The clock still runs. Watch the play coming at you. Number 72, Grant Cook with the lead block. And then at the end, when the tackle is made, here comes the pile, and they roll onto his ankle as he's trying to get up. Third down and eight at the 10. Green remains in the game. Charge timeout, Arkansas. And Their Arkansas. second timeout. We'll call a timeout. 3.46 to play, third and eight coming up. Exciting and very competitive football game, and this is what they're playing for, folks. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Trophy, and you're three minutes and 46 seconds away from Arkansas possibly winning this game. They hand it off, Roderick Green dumped in the backfield by Arthur Brown, who came out of nowhere. Clock keeps running, 3.37. And now, a timeout on the field. And don't forget, coming up after the game, stay tuned for the AT&T Post Game Show. We'll wrap up with the presentation of the trophy, along with interviews, highlights, and analysis. Gus, when this drive started, I opined that Arkansas would not put the ball in dry dock. All right, that they would go ahead and use their, their passing game and go down the field. And on first down, they did. They threw the ball for seven or eight yards. And then after that, it was four straight Broderick Green runs, big, tough runs, gobbled up yardage. And Bobby Petrino may have had it in his head to throw it, but when you're running it that successfully, he changed gears. And then on that fifth run there, not much yardage, but it sets them up in nice, nice position for a field goal attempt. Kansas State using their second timeout, so one remaining. And that brings on the field goal unit. Hocker in to attempt one from 30 yards away. And it's good. Third field goal of the night for Zach Hocker. And the Razorbacks 
with 3.30 remaining in the fourth. Take a 29-16 lead. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic is sponsored by the 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee by Joyful Noise from Warner Brothers Pictures in theaters January 13th and by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Twenty-nine, sixteen. Arkansas, three thirty remaining in the fourth. Mr. Jerry Jones and Coach Broyles. About that, pupil and coach played for him on the 1964 Arkansas National Championship team. So Arkansas will send it away. Kansas State with Tremaine Thompson and Chris Harper back deep. And they'll bring it out of the end zone. Thompson. Oh, good special teams play. He's down. And that Seth Ambrose making the tackle. Don't forget coming up. It's the AT&T post-game show. Kevin, Marcus, and Daryl. Post-game wrap-up and also the trophy presentation. Colin Klein back in. And the power run game pretty much eliminated now because of time for Kansas State. He'll have to make plays with his arm. Here's Klein looking. And the ball caught on the far side at the 21. And getting up a little shaky, Terrell Miller. Up in the passing, defense number 42. 15 yards to the end of the run. Automatic first down. And these are the plays you just cannot have at this stage of the game if you're Arkansas. Everything's going your way. You get an incomplete pass. Well after the play, the hit by Chris Smith. Not necessary, costs his team 15, gets the clock stopped for Kansas State, and gives them better field position. Bad play by Chris Smith. So they move it up, the pass completed to the 37. With three minutes to go. Klein underneath, and this is Chris Harper. Harper close to the first down. And that's that's a guy I've been waiting to hear his name called for a long time this evening. Hurry up offense. Being used by the Cats. First down at the 47. Klein in trouble. Gets out of the pocket and he'll run it out of bounds. And stop the clock at 237. What a season it's been for Colin Klein, named the Big 12's top all-purpose player. Second down and 10 at the 47. Klein responsible for 69% of K-State's yards this season running. And he is dragged down from behind by Alonzo Heisman. Heisman has had a great game as well. Uh, that's when you know you're starting to add a few to the odometer. Played against his father in the Sugar Bowl, January of 1986. Oh, boy. <laughs> Third down and seven. At midfield for Klein. Over the middle. And it's incomplete. Terrell Miller again, and that'll bring up fourth down. With a minute and 46 to go, and it looks like... Kansas State will go for it. Yeah, I don't think they have a whole lot of choice on this one. What I can't wait to see is what Arkansas decides to do defensively. Do they rush three, rush four, and drop everyone else? They've been bringing five on certain downs here, even on this possession. They're not just totally laying back. Three-man front. Let's see what they decide to do. Well, fourth down and seven. 
They bring pressure. Klein. Oh, beautiful catch. Miller trying to get out of bounds, but they keep him inbounds. Terrell Miller stopped by Greg Gatson, but he gained 13 yards on fourth and seven. But if the clock stops because of the first down, now they have to hustle to the line of scrimmage and be ready when it's marked in play. It's, uh, it's already started the clock. Klein. Oh, from behind. Chris Smith, fifth sack of the night for Arkansas. Remember how he started this sequence with the, pass, the roughing the passer call, went to the sideline for a little counseling, reinserted, and tries to make up for it with the sack. Second down and 15 at the 42. Line again. And again, he is taken down in the backfield. Six sacks tonight by the Razorbacks. Chris Smith again, back-to-back -back sacks. And this defense should be very proud of the way they play. And Bobby Petrino feels, has to feel great about his move, bringing in new defense coordinator Paul Haynes. His first game calling defenses for Arkansas. Right now, he's got to feel great as they try and finish off this game. On third down and 20, Klein trying to get outside, and he does. And the clock will stop with 20 seconds remaining. Very, very difficult for teams that are heavy run teams that aren't super sophisticated in the pass game. When you have to change gears and all you do is throw it, and they pin their ears back and come after you. Hard to hold up in that. Offensive lines used to run blocking more than pass blocking. And here come the rushers. Fourth down and 16. Colin Klein. And picked off. Jericho Nelson. Down the sideline. Nelson still running. And Nelson finally stopped at the 13. With five seconds to go. A 62-yard return. The Arkansas Razorbacks will end their season with an 11-2 record, and what a season it has been. They will win the 76th AT&T Cotton Bowl and realize that their only two losses this season came at the hands of the two best teams in college football. And the last time I remember one conference having one, two, and three in the slots, and I may be wrong, I remember the old Big Eight with Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Colorado finishing at 1-2-3 in the early 70s. And Arkansas is not going to be voted, I don't believe, one of the top three teams when it's all said and done because of Oklahoma State's win. But I think they feel like they are one of the top three teams in the country having finished this off. Tyler Wilson and the Arkansas Razorbacks, Bob Petrino. Walks off the field for the final time this year with a 29-16 win over Kansas State. 11 wins this year for Arkansas. Ties the school record. Bob Petrino faced Coach Snyder tonight. Coach Snyder his second tour of duty with this Kansas State squad. They are in hog heaven here in Texas. And you know it has to feel good for Arkansas when they were really challenged tonight. They responded after the big run by Kansas State to draw them close. And we'd like to welcome you to the AT&T postgame show. Cowboys Stadium. Where the Arkansas Razorbacks have defeated the Kansas State Wildcats 29-16 to to win the Cotton Bowl. Fourth win in the Cotton Bowl for Arkansas.
Their last appearance, 2008, losing to Missouri. Won the Cotton Bowl in 65, 76, 2000, and now this year. Now let's go downstairs where our Tim Brewster is standing by. Thank you, Gus. Huge momentum changer tonight in the game, Joe Adams. A punt return to the house for a touchdown. Fourth one of the season. What was the key on that return for you to score? Oh, just the guys that get me back to the field. They did a great job blocking, and it was just all on me to return the ball. How important was it to you and your seniors to win this game, win the Cotton Bowl, and 11 games on the season? Oh, it was very, it was very important because last year we didn't win, and this was a bowl game that we won. We looked at it as a BCS game, so we had to get this W. Well, I got one last question for you. We got a, we got a national championship game. Who's going to win? You've played them both. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be up in there. Thank you, Joe. Congratulations on a great year. Thank Gus, you. back to you. All right, thank you very much, Coach Brewster. And his return made it 10 to nothing early in the second quarter for Arkansas. 29-16, the final. And for the post-game ceremony, let's go down to Kevin Frazier. Gus, thank you so much. It is hog heaven here in Cowboy Stadium. And to present the trophy to the Arkansas Razorbacks, the champions of the Cotton Bowl, the chairman of the Cotton Bowl, Tommy Bain. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Coach Petrino, on behalf of Mark Keeper and AT&T and the Cotton Bowl board, it is our uh, privilege to present to you the 2012 Cotton Bowl trophy. Congratulations. Hey, give me your hand. Coach Petrino, you get 11 wins this season, but more importantly, you win the Cotton Bowl. What does this mean for the program? Oh, it's just a great win. The first thing I'd like to do is thank our crowd, thank our fans. Thanks for coming, everybody. we got the greatest fans in America. I thought our team really played well. This is what we wanted to do was send this senior class out with a win. Our senior class did a lot for us, played extremely hard, has really done a great job for this program. We understand that Gary... Garrett Uckman was with us today. We miss you, Garrett. I can't say enough about our football team. What adjustments did you make for the second half to change the momentum of this game? Well, offensively, we wanted to come out and hit some of our quick game and, and run the ball better. I thought our offensive line did a much better job on the, on the line of scrimmage in the second half. Defensively, we didn't change a whole lot. We did a good job on first down. We played really well on defense the entire game. All right, enjoy this one. Congratulations. For the fourth time, the Arkansas Razorbacks are the champions of the Cotton Bowl. Let's send it over to Coach Brewster. Thank you, Kevin. I'm here with Jake Beckett, and you played great tonight. You had two sacks, relentless effort all game long. Talk about first down defense and the emphasis on that in tonight's game. Yeah, our, our game plan, as you could see, um, was on first and second down. Just stop the run. You know, get them out of those second and medium, second and short uh, opportunities and uh, really get them in third and long and uh, give us a chance to tee off if we did that. As a senior, you go out as a winner. Cotton Bowl champions, 11 wins. What's it mean to you, Jake? It's, uh, it's so special to be uh, part, part of one of the best teams in Arkansas history. You know, to get 11 wins, you know, hopefully finish the season in the top five. Uh, just means so much for our program and to win this great bowl game. Uh, it's just so special. Congratulations, Jake. Great job. Thanks, Gus, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Coach Brewster. Arkansas with a 29-16 win to win the Cotton Bowl, and it's truly been a very special year for this football team. They have a special, special coach in Bobby Petrino. Done a fantastic job getting him to the point now where they were going to compete for SEC titles year in and year out. Five and seven in the first year. He talked about those seniors. Look where they end up, 11 wins as seniors. Well, coming up, we will have more post-game reaction as well as our final thoughts. 29-16, Arkansas winning the Cotton Bowl. <laughs> 